My eyes are puffy? The star of the world? finally over all the good stuff is waiting for you oh my god <laughs> whoop whoop that's the sound of the police huh huh that's the sound of the geese so you're really going to block the star of gore world just because i'm defending myself against people are you serious the star of Gore World. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello, girl gang. It's so good to see you guys. I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend so far. I'm sorry about yesterday. I had no electricity at my house. Ugh, no freaking electricity. I got home and it was dark for hours and it had been dark for hours. Freaking insane. Anyway, I had to charge my phone in the car yesterday. There was no choice. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, here we are. Doesn't matter. A nice and early one this morning. So we're going to get right into it because uh, it's too shocking not to. I am shocked this morning. I wake up. There's a video. Okay. <laughs> Did you guys all watch the video? Is anyone going into this blind? Because I feel like if anyone is going into this blind, there should be some kind of a, a warning here. This may be. I don't know the most offensive thing Chantal's ever done because Cuba rage still exists. Pumped up kicks incident still exists. This one needs to be added to that list. In my opinion, we are going today to film in a graveyard. I'm not kidding. <laughs> We're going to film in a graveyard um, for their Eid content. They decided it would be a appropriate thing a smart thing to go to a graveyard and film salad's mother's grave okay so that's what we're doing today uh miss movie buff thank you for the super chat they have reached a new level of cringe that's a good way of putting it new level of cringe new depths of exploitation for coin is that fair um, three days ago now, four days ago, four days ago, because we were a day behind reacting. Uh, Salad came home, <clears throat> whatever, sits down, starts shishaing and talking about how I'm using the cat for views. Don't you find it funny that literally three days after saying that you took your fake wife to your mother's grave and made a video there? What was that for, if not to exploit and for views and for coins? And I've said it forever. I'm going to say it again. It's the end of the month. This was two shitty paydays for Chantal in a row. Is this some way of what, you know, ending the month strong? I don't know. I don't know. But this one today, to go that far, to go to film in a graveyard, to film your mother's grave, you won't show us a marriage certificate, but you're filming your mother's grave? Okay, that was a choice. 
Life's all about choices, right? <clears throat> Sometimes, though, before we make choices, it's good to look into some things. Because, you know, even if you don't know every rule and every law and whatever, Google Google is a thing and Google exists and Google exists to help us out sometimes with the things we don't know. So because I was completely ignorant about, can you even do that? I went to Google and here's what I found on the Google. Whoa. Kuwait bans filming inside of cemeteries published March 12th, 2019. Municipality says shooting in graveyards is an affront to sanctity of the dead. Uh, Kuwaiti municipality has banned the use of all kinds of cameras to take pictures or shoot videos at the country's cemeteries. All legal measures will be taken to ensure full compliance with this, this, uh, the decision, the municipality has warned. The move follows uproar on social media when Suban Graveyard in the capital was used as a location to shoot scenes for a TV show. Quote, the sanctity of the dead should not be violated and respect for them should be upheld. End quote. Okay. Chantal and Salad had, I suppose, nothing to do for Eid content. Now, did Salad maybe go to his mother's grave for Eid? I wouldn't be surprised. That seems like a very appropriate thing for someone to do. Eid is like a family holiday. You eat with your family. You spend the time, the, the day with your family, you know, after a whole month of family time. It would be a time to go to your mother's grave, let's say. If I was in his position... I would have spent the time yesterday going to my mother's grave to, what, introduce my fake wife to my mother, in a way. Maybe clean up her grave site a little bit, because, anyway, we're going to get into the video, and that place does not look maintained at all. It's the least you could do. If you don't, you know, have your, your loved one in a cemetery where, where they maintain them, it falls on the family to, you know, maintain those kind of things. It shows that you haven't forgotten your lost one, your lost loved one, and you still care. You took the time to go there, have an insincere moment with your insincere fake wife, and neither one of you dumbasses, that's right, brought a flower, brought a little rock. You put a little rock on the top of the grave, and it just, it's, it's like, I remembered I'm here, I put the rock, you know? You bring something, you tidy it up a little. That is how you go and you show respect. You don't go there. Chantal walking all over other people's graves. He has to tell her a couple of times in the video, hey, be careful where you walk. Like you're walking on people. She goes there to have a completely insincere moment. To say, I'll take care of your son. It's disgusting absolutely disgusting. Muslims believe there's like a saying that paradise is found under the feet of your mother. That's a thing. Le paradis se trouve sous les pieds de ta mère. It's a, it's a saying. It's a, it's a belief that Muslims have for you to go there on Eid and not even clean up the space around your mother. It's so disgusting, so disrespectful to go there to film your shitty fucking content and leave again and leave the place the way you found it when you got there. I have no words for your behavior. It's so, so fucking gross. I will forever keep this video on the level of Cuba rage and the pumped up kicks incident in terms of just disrespectful, offensive, disgusting, disgusting. <laughs> I, like, I'm lucky enough, and I knock wood as I say this, to still have both my parents. I had an ex who had lost his father when he was a baby. A baby. Like, he didn't even really know his father. He couldn't even talk about it. He could barely talk about it without bursting into tears. The amount of respect, um, the amount of, of emotion there, the feeling, the, it, it was still so raw. You know what I mean? Salad goes there to make a, a farce out of the whole thing. There's no like emotion. There's no, there was nothing real. If there was something real, you wouldn't have been filming and you would have felt it privately. You know, that's my opinion. Just absolutely disgusting. Now there's a whole side controversy going on a little bit 
in the community because Salad has now been inconsistent with the age he was when he lost his mother. Uh, just days ago, again, during that stream where he came and took the shisha um, like pipe from her and he was, she asked him how old he was when he lost his mother. And he said 11 or 12. And then in this video, he says it was 15 years ago. He was 15. It's weird. It, now, it, I mean, it, they're close, 11, 12 or 15. It's not that far off. But you would think something as heavy as losing a parent, you you don't, you're not off by three years. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I would remember to the day. I would be able to, I, I was this age. It would be something that really sticks with you. You know what I mean? It's something very fucking weird. Very weird in that story. In my opinion, uh, smiley guy, thank you for the super chat. New to the girl gang. Well, welcome to the dark side. <laughs> uh, welcome to the fry basket, well, the deep fryer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm sorry for the loss of your baby, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry it's on such a kind of dark day. Oh, it's really shitty. It's raining balls outside. Our plan. We had big plans for a stream. Remember, I was like, oh, keep your eye for a notification on Sunday. We're going to have so much fun on Sunday. And stuff. It's pouring rain in Montreal today, all day long. It's, it's been raining since last night, really. Um, and the thing that was planned for today that I'm still not telling you what it was, was outdoors. So it's been postponed. Okay. We want, it's not canceled. No, 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 this is happening, but it had to be postponed. Unfortunately, this has been a whole last week from hell. I tell you, oh my God. Uh, Beatles. Thank you for the super chat. Shame Chantal didn't get the memo. Her 15 minutes have long expired. I mean, I don't know what the hell this woman is doing. Really, I, I get it, trying to stir up controversy. It's something that's like worked for her before, but I don't know. There's some things, in my opinion, you don't touch. And she's been touching a hell of a lot of those things lately. Touching in uh, religion, joking about people's culture. Now, now we're disrespecting the deceased. I mean, like, there are certain things in life, no matter how controversial and shocking you want to be, you don't go there. And she, it like goes out of her way to go there. It's disgusting. Not your average old lady. Thank you for the super chat. Thanks for being here, girl. Um, Kuwait toss her in the clink. I'm surprised this video is still up. Like, is she sleeping now? What the hell is going on? I'm sure she's been told a million times, hey, hey, that's apparently illegal to film in there. There's apparently signs up even now. She couldn't understand the signs, but what? He didn't understand the signs? Not to film? Bun Captor, thank you for the super chat. My late mom's birthday is April 12th. I bought her favorite coffee, Tim's Double Double, and it kills me. Aw, I'm so sorry for your loss, girl. But like, that that is what I'm saying. Like, people do things to honor people that they've lost. You bought her favorite coffee. You thought of her on that day. I know without knowing, there's no way you would have gone to wherever she's, you know, buried and uh, made content out of it, made it just a farce out of it. It's disgusting. It tells me they really had nothing else to do uh, on Eid. Hmm? Eid that you're supposed to spend with your family. Eid that you're supposed to eat. And well, like we were saying in the last stream, we gave her the benefit of the doubt. Okay, it was like early hours of the morning. Where's your new clothes? Where's your new head to toe everything? Fine, it's still early. Maybe they were going to go out and do that. We're going to watch the video in a minute together. She's wearing the same old shit. He's wearing the same old shit. There was not an actual Eid celebration. And I think when she was like, well, we're going to spend it with family. That was her planning to go to the graveyard with salad. Like they're not spending it with family. They had fuck all to do on Eid, except for, you know, disrespect the departed. Miss Pickles, thank you for the super chat. His mom ain't dead. It's all a money grab. You think? I don't know. I hope not. I'm not, I'm, I, it's like, I don't want to believe that people could lie about that kind of shit and be that evil. That's what I'm like, you think I'm going to choose to believe nobody would lie about that. What kind of sick fuck would lie about that? I can't, I, my brain doesn't want to even go there. You know, West coast girl. Thank you for the super chat. It never changed. Right. I'm sorry for your loss too. Like it, it that's it. it. It never changes. It's like I said, my ex was a baby. When his father, a baby, he, he didn't even know his father. You know what I mean? It affected him up until his forties. Like, and I'm sure, I'm sure for the rest of his life, like 
I don't know. I don't know. There, there's a weird coldness about salad also in the thing. Whatever. We're, we're going to watch that part. We may rewind certain moments in that part. I, I It's very telling to me. Her standing there just performing and him, I don't even know, making an ass out of himself. The Recovery Collective. Thank you for the super chat. In Niagara Falls on Eid, there were groups of families dressed in beautiful colored gowns having picnics and so friendly. The vibe was so happy. The way it should be, you know? families spending time together. It, it's like, it's like the equivalent of like, like, um, Christmas dinner. You know what I mean? Like you spend it with your loved ones. You spend it with your family. Ramadan too. But one of the things of Ramadan is not to isolate yourself. These two, she, can you be more isolated than locked into a cell with nobody? They didn't do shit that they were uh, performative, performative. And that shit doesn't count. It's bullshit. Henny, thank you for the super chat. Please read in Salad's voice. This is Eid money for my beautiful wife. So cute. Oh, he'll, 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 he'll. <laughs> I hope that did it justice. Yeah. Just like when uh, Koki <clears throat> paid for the Burger King, you know, when she had just slipped him the money so he could pretend to pay for the Burger King. I think that's him giving the money to her that she had just given to him. It's, it's, it's what she does. You know what I mean? Consistent with that kind of bullshit. Anyway, let's get the video. It's not too long. It's just super disgusting. Huh? <laughs> Crafts and cartoon craziness. Thank you for the super chat. I think Salad is letting Foodie Beauty do this on purpose to get her locked up or deported. It's the only legal way to ditch her. Eesh. You think? You think he's that fed up of her already? Or is just... <clears throat> How do you say this in a kind, non-attacky way? Is he so dull that he doesn't even realize how nasty what they did yesterday was. Is that possible? Hmm? Can they both just be so fucking dumb that they don't realize? <laughs> I don't know. Nobody's that dumb. All right, let me get the tab. Everybody take a deep breath and we're going to watch this one. All right, hold on. Allison, thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks for being here, girl. Yeah, first scene and I'm already mad. <laughs> She's on my nerves before we even get going because I know what's coming in this one. But this will always piss me off. Do you really think, Chantal, that feeding stray cats now somehow like cosmically makes up for the fact that you tried to starve your own pet to have a stronger argument when you took her to the vet for end of life consultation? It doesn't make up for that fact. It doesn't uh, erase that fact. It changes nothing about you. It actually shows how gross you are. Anything for your content, anything to convince and manipulate your new non-existent new audience that you're not an actual animal abusing piece of crap. And I say animal abuser, and it's been confirmed by a doctor. This isn't some uh, accusation or some wild statement. You are confirmed by a vet to be an animal abuser. Feed all the stray cats in the whole goddamn world, Chantal. It's not going to change that fact at all. Cougarelli, thank you so much for the super chat. I mentioned this on Twitter. This grave business has my spidey sense is tingling. His mother's grave is the biggest, most prominent one. Something is off. Could be. Could be. Something feels off about this whole thing. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> She look at me. Yeah, she's scared, but like... Oh, she feels safe. Aww. You are in good hands, Kat. <laughs> oh, I'm sitting here. I'm just like, shaking my head and biting my tongue. But now you've gone too far, salad. No. With you two morons, the cat is not in good hands. You hotbox animals in their cell, and she purposely tries to starve them and lets them suffer in agony. Your cat, eat the food and run. 
Enjoy your food. It's okay, honey. Enjoy your food. MashaAllah, she eats it all. She's too hungry. We're hungry, baby. I wonder what uh, BBJ's first meal was like when she finally got food after three and a half days. I bet she ate it wildly like that cat did too, huh? She must have been hungry. S uh, Salad, you find it so cute? Did you find it cute when Chantal was trying to starve her cat? Was it so cute? Elin, thank you for the super chat, girl. I forgot when I got to the graveyard part of this video, I was so shocked by what was going on. I forgot this part of the video. I, we didn't even mention that. Wow. Wow. Huh. There's so much inappropriate stuff going on in this video. So salad thinks it's appropriate to take a camera into a mosque and he knows there's something fucked about it. Cause look how sneaky he's trying to be with it. Look at him. He's a sneak. He's a fucking sneak. He's sneaking recording in a mosque, you know, other people's sacred time, let's say between them and God, if they have no fucking respect and they want to just be shit cosplaying as coyant, they can do whatever the hell they want. But to go into a mosque and film people who are actually there praying like that on Eid. <laughs> oh, and, and another thing where he was like, oh, when Chantal said he's going to the men only mosque. Nobody, and that's including people in Kuwait, have ever heard of a men's only mosque. Ever. No one. Bullshit. Winter Sun, thank you for the super chat, girl. You hear him like repeating along? He's such an ass. That, oh, this makes me sick. You're supposed to be like in the moment. You're, you're supposed to have no distractions. He's too busy filming and worrying where's his camera, but also performatively like following along. Disgusting. Disgusting. If I was any of the people in this mosque and I saw this video, I would have his ass banned from ever fucking going back in that place. Look at him! He put the camera down! What a schmuck! Completely agree. But does he? I beg to touch his moist, leaky peen. Thank you for the super chat. I don't know. I, I feel cringe even watching. Like, we skipped ahead. I'm going to skip ahead again. I feel like we shouldn't be watching this. I feel like nobody should be recording this. And if you're recording this, I feel like everyone else in the room should know that they are potentially being recorded. This is so fucked to me. Honestly, not surprised that it's also illegal to film like that in a mosque. Wow. What an absolute schmuck. God, these videos are so bad. Look, just let's calculate all this. This video is only what 10 minutes long. How much filler content is going to be in this video? So 
Did you see how long we watched the cat eat the food? Instead of just editing that down to just a couple of seconds of the cat eating, it went on and on and on. Now this driving with this stupid fucking music is going to go on and on. Just stretch out the shitty content video. Why make an eight minute video when we can make a 10 minute video? It's just ridiculous, Chantal, for real. Uh, Haaz, I agree. None of the men in that mosque would consent to being put on these two morons public vlog. Of all the times, too, you want to go in and film. There's plenty of times during the day where there's nobody in a mosque. You go on Eid at prayer time. Like, what is wrong with you? For real, for real. Hi, guys. So we're here visiting Salah's mom at the graveyard. And as you can see, it's tradition on Eid to visit deceased relatives. So there was quite a line up to even get in the cemetery. Okay. Is it sacrilegious to be judgmental of a graveyard? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't, listen, <laughs> I'm just going to say that place looks a mess, which a lot, a lot of cemeteries are a mess. Okay. Um, but it's like, I'm saying if cemeteries don't have, let's say, uh, groundskeepers that keep that shit like neat, normally it would fall onto the families to go and keep, you know, their plots, let's say neat. Um, You're there now. You're there now. I'm not even going to judge the fact that you haven't gone there yet. It's six months later, and now you're going for the first time. Fine. Once you're there, wouldn't you kind of clean up your little plot? Why is there no flowers anywhere? Not even one. No flower anywhere. And what is up with those weird, thin gravestones? Is this weird? Is this just like how it's done there? Am I ignorant? It's I am ignorant. But is that, is that like how it's done? Because I've never seen such shinsy little gravestones. And this guy claims to have money and apparently comes from a family that is like, you know, like professionals and doing well. What is up with this little graveyard? I have so many questions. Is this where the Kuwaitis are buried? Or is this a place where they bury non-Kuwaitis? And then with that logic, why didn't they bury her in Syria? If she really died all those years ago, it was before the civil war started. Why would you not be like repatriated to be buried? I have so many questions. Be careful, baby. Don't step on the grave uh, because it's haram. You know, it's uh, showing. Oh, my God. You're you're filming in a graveyard and you're going to tell her what's haram. Okay. I'm sure stepping on a grave. You don't, you don't stand on the grave. And notice that's not the first or the only time he's going to tell her. Don't step on the graves. Oh, I know, Jason. FFG, there's no flowers in Islam. Okay. Very good to know. Thank you for letting me know that. Okay. Okay. I'm sure, though, there's a little cleaning up of the, the plot. We're making it neat. If you don't bring flat, fine. Do you, do you leave little rocks on top of the stone? I don't know. Anyway, neither here nor there. I'm sure you can just clean up your mother's little plot of land, you know? Of course, there's flowers in Islam. But did they, okay, flowers to the grave, though? I have no idea. Yeah, it's Haram to film, and he's worried, although he should be, of her stepping on graves is also Haram, but he doesn't mind the filming. Hmm? Lazy, thank you for the super chat, girl. girl Lazy, I'm, I'm really sorry for your family's loss. Thank you, respect for the date. Yes, all right, baby. 
my mom grip over there. We have to read Surah Fatiha for him. Come here, baby. This is so fucked up to me. So, 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 so fucked up. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. And they're being filmed. Ugh. Um, I, I, it's just so fucked. It is so fucked. And look at her just mimicking like what he's doing. And, you know, oh, it's, it's so performative. It, uh, it sickens me. I think this is so fucking sacrilegious. Oh, sorry. It's only Jews who do the rocks. Okay. Then I, I, listen, I'm out. Those are the two things I know. For my dad's family, you put flowers. And for my mom's family, we put the little rocks on the top. That's all I know. Why is her grave like different than the others? What is that? And is this supposed to be him cleaning up around the grave? Okay, whatever. Why is hers different? Is there a reason? Do I not get it? Is that is that because they're like the wealthy family in the graveyard? I don't understand this. I, I just can't believe that. Yeah, oh God, the music, the, the editing of the music on top of this guy, like cleaning up his mother's grave. The filming of you like praying at your mother's grave. Why the fuck would you film this? What is wrong with these two idiots? For real, for real. Just messed up. Shan Toddler, thank you for the super chat. These two toddlers, lack of definition, have rendered me speechless with their latest vlog. Agreed. Agreed. Why couldn't she have like done this with him during the day? Then come home. Tell us the little story and put that, the telling of the story of going to the grave and meeting his mother in theory and stuff into a video. And where's the rest of his family? Clearly someone was filming them. Okay. Like praying. Fine. If you go to the fam the grave on Eid, and that's like a traditional thing to do, where the hell is the rest of your family salad? You guys are clearly not spending Eid with your family if you've gone to your mother's grave alone. The, the little charade of like spending time with family. I think that's pretty much over having seen this video. I, I think it's Morad too. He seems to always be there and filming or whatever. His family probably thinks she's gross. Well, if the rumor that Allah told us is true, the father wants nothing to do with her. He thinks this whole thing is a fucking shirt, like beyond a joke. Uh, wants nothing to do with this shit. Would definitely not participate in this. But I think really them two going to the grave alone shows just how little contact they actually have with his family. Kind of proves it. Cam, thank you for the super chat. Faked or not, this is gross. Agreed. So baby, how old were you about whenever um, your mother passed away? My mom died 15 years ago. Uh, I was like 15 years old. So which one is it? Are you just, you making a mistake? Is this just a simple mistake? Are you lying for whatever reason about the date of your mother's death? Or are you lying about your age? Because it seems like one or the other. I don't know. You never really came off as 28 years old to me, 29 now, whatever, whatever. You came off as older. Is that what's going on? Is it like lying about age for no reason at all? I don't understand it, but I also find it very fucking weird. You would remember how old you were when your mother died. I think it's very strange to like, you know, to, to be three years off like that. That's fucking weird to me. Very, very weird. May she rest in peace, baby. I mean, I mean, yeah. well, it's time to say goodbye for my mom. This, this, I swear to God, I've never hated Chantal more than watching this face this morning. I wanted to take the coffee cup in my hand and just whoop it at the computer. I've never been so sickened by this woman. 
as I am in this picture, this one right here, this, 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 burn this bitch into your brain. Look at her. Look at the bad actress. Look at the performance going on with her hoof at her heart hmm? and the ring and the fucking sunglasses and the pout. I swear to God, <laughs> I have never hated her or been as like just sickened as I was after watching them perform this farce at the graveyard and then her right now, right now, that face, that face and that fucking hoof. I swear to God. I, oh, she makes me ragey. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Do we all remember the way she behaved when her grandmother was dying? I remember it like it was yesterday. She was high on cocaine, flying back and forth to the hospital, trying to get out of there as fast as possible every time to run back to Koki. That's her grandmother, the grandmother who raised her. Hmm? Not some distant grandmother she didn't know. She was plopped off at the grandmother's house because her teenage mother wanted to still go fucking around. Huh? The grandmother who raised her, and that's how she behaved when her grandmother was dying. But look at the performance going on at this dipshit's mother's grave. I can't. This makes me so sick. Look at her waving. Put the fucking hand. Oh my god. No, no, no. No, I'm gonna oh I'm losing it. I'm getting too mad. When she waves her meat paw at the grave, I could, I could die. I could absolutely die. And I hope I will take very good care of your son forever, inshallah. So sweet, babe. Okay. I would take good care of your. I swear to God, if I was his mother, I would start haunting this bitch as of tonight. That's it. You get ready. Boo. Any dark place you go, boo. I would haunt the shit out of Chantal after this day. Hey guys, thanks for being here. Nassalam. Exactly. <laughs> the gaming gird. <laughs> Great name. Thank you for the super chat. Sorry to interrupt. Usually I lurk, but the other day he said he was 11. Then he said 11 or 12. And now he's saying 15. It's not adding up. And I just don't think something that happens so like um recent it's not that many years ago to say oh well he's in his 80s and maybe he's losing it a little uh you know what i mean how do you forget how old you were when your mother died that's such an uh, such a huge event such a traumatic thing to go through as a young person or a, any person you know to lose your mother you remember how old you were how you go 11 12 15 there's something fucked in that story Be careful of the grave, babe. Second time. Have to be careful of these thorn bushes. Yeah, be careful, honey. Third time he has to hell, tell a fucking wrecking ball not to stand on the graves. Three times. Why did you bring her here? Salad, why did you bring her here? Why didn't you go to the grave with your father and your sisters and stuff that she didn't have to be included in this? If it was like them or her, which it sounds like it is, you should have gone with them. It is about family. Your mother wouldn't have wanted anything to do with this either. Okay. Uh, Hanny, thank you for the super chat and for the info. That's good to know. I had no idea. Thank you. Anno Noodle, thank you for the super chat. We're supposed to take care of the graves. You're supposed to wash it and say certain prayers. Um, also, greet the dead when you enter and say goodbye. Flowers are optional. Makes total sense to me. Uh, FFG, doesn't Canada have the same respect? Don't walk on graves. I, I think that's pretty universal. 
I think that would literally would be anywhere. You don't walk on the graves. You walk like in the rows between or, you, you know, I, I really think that's a universal thing. I think this moron has probably never been to a graveyard because she's just, I want to say spoiled to a certain extent. If, if people in her family would have been gone to, let's say, visit a, a deceased member of the family, she would have been like, I don't, I don't know. And they'd be like, okay, hey. you know, she's just a spoiled little shit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have much experience in a graveyard because I don't really have family here in that way. You know what I mean? It's not the same. And oh, in, in Greece, they go and they, anyway, that's a, a topic we should talk about one day. What they do with the dead in Greece, it's very interesting. It's not like North America. But here, let's say, I, ha I have my grandmother and my grandfather, my, my mom's too, you know. I, we've been there a few times in my life. I haven't gone too many times, to be totally honest. But even I know, like I was told as a child, you know what I mean? The first time you go, you go around, you, you go around, you don't fucking stampede all over them. And I don't know there, I would say even more because you see how they're like, the, the earth is kind of like not level. I don't know how to respectfully say that. Did you notice in the Kuwaiti graveyard, there's like lumps of earth at everybody's grave? Well, like here, the graves are level. Once the person has like, let's say, been been in them for a certain amount of time it's a level grave and even that it, in theory would be easier to walk across a grave here and it's not done you know how on a raised grave like that are you gonna just be stampeding over people she doesn't give a shit Yeah, that's a good point. Yes, have some. Thank you for the super chat. She intentionally left in that shot of her stepping on the grave. You're right, because this is edited. This isn't like, oh, they were, can you imagine live in a graveyard? But yeah, anything she leaves in when editing is left in on purpose. She did that on purpose. She left it in on purpose. It is what it is. So after the graveyard, we came home and had a Eid breakfast, some traditional foods here that are eaten uh, on Eid morning. So we have some pineapple and orange juice and a couple of fresh pears. And can you guess which one is my glass? <laughs> the one with lots of ice, of course. Yes, you know I love my ice. And also we have a bunch of fresh bread. The leftovers, of course, go back in the freezer so that it stays fresh. And we have some falafel. Wait, the leftovers go in the freezer or the leftovers go back in the freezer? Do they just keep like freezing and defrosting and freezing and defrosting the same fucking pitas all the time? Ugh, that sounds awesome. Uh, Lisa, thank you for the super chat. I'm an Italian girl. And when we visit a gravesite, we bring gardening tools, a garbage bag and everything we can to make everything look beautiful. Yeah, I think that's pretty universal too. I'm thinking where my grandparents are at like it's a Jewish cemetery, you know, um, there's groundskeeper. It's in theory all kept up, but it's still, you know what I mean? Every time you've gone there, you, you pick the weeds, you just, you beautify a little bit what's going on, like to do nothing like that for him to bend over and, Oh, pick up a couple of rocks while she films him for the like performance of making it neat is disgusting. Well, some fresh, delicious falafel, my favorite. <laughs> So we have a bunch of those. We had a bag with some extra ones as well. You get 25 of them for one KD. And we have here is a mixture of hummus and ful. Ful is uh, fava beans as well, which is a very big breakfast staple here in the uh, Middle East. And in Kuwait here, we have that often for breakfast. Okay, <laughs> this is maybe petty, maybe it's just because I'm already worked up now, but I also find it disgusting that we've gone from graveyard and like the somberness of that and stuff to food, food, food. Here's our breakfast. Uh, here's all the things. Here's the price of the fucking uh, uh, falafels and stuff. I don't think these should have been melded into one video in this way. Mm -mm. Karen Cross, thank you for the super chat. I would bet Murad, he seems like the only one who goes anywhere with them and the only friend he seems to have. I don't know. 
And we have some um, makdus, which is the stuffed and pickled eggplant and some square cream cheese spread as well. So the idea here is, as you can see, Salah and I doing. Oh, and there's also olive oil and fresh lemon juice and herbs sprinkled on top like coriander and parsley. So you take the falafel and also the uh, fresh bread as well, and you dip it inside of the ful and um, hummus mixture. Really delicious. Yum. Bismillah. Another traditional treat you see at Eid, apparently, is called mamul. And it's like little, if you guys ever had like I love mamul. They sell them a lot here. It's very, like, uh, you find them everywhere here. I've never seen, like, pre-packaged like that in a container like that. You go and do a bakery, you get them fresh. They sell fresh, so fresh, everywhere, so fresh. Why are you buying them pre-made in a bucket? The fuck? <laughs> what happened to all the fresh? Um, Date squares, it's like little date cookies. So it's like cookie and then the middle is like date and they're soft and they're actually it's yeah no it's it's not like a fig newton i mean it's date inside not fig and the outside it's like um like a cookie made with some semolina in it it's friggin delicious you hate mamu really with a good cup of coffee when it's like melting in your mouth <gasps> oh fuck it up i love anything with dates though i'm a real charmoot for a date hmm hmm yeah, Oceana song. It's sort of like a Fig Newton, but it's not Fig. It's dates inside. And the actually, the cookie is not like a Fig Newton at all. <laughs> but close. They're really, really tasty, especially to eat with tea and coffee. Eid Mubarak, Habib Tea. Habib Eid, Habibi. What in the performance art is going on? This whole video feels like a dream. Or a nightmare, or whatever. <laughs> potato, potato. What the fuck is this? Six months, we finally see a little contact. Why does this look like it's the first time they've ever touched? Can we watch that hug again? We need to analyze. Wait, wait. You know, we've discussed this over and over. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell by the way people look at each other. You can tell by the way people touch if they are fucking or not. They are not. I would bet my life on it. Allegedly conspiracy, whatever. Chantal's dune buggy. Thank you for the super chat. Habib tea. Habib Eid, Habibi. Uh oh, the way he patted her arm. What the shit was that? Wait, wait, wait. I think we're going to stick here for a minute. Hold on. It's the little pats. That is how I would hug my grandma. That is a grandma hug. Look, he's trying not to do it too hard. It's it's like it, you don't want to squeeze your grandma, you know, and like tap, 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 tap. That was the most awkward thing I've ever seen in my life. And here I have something for you. We call it Eid, a small gift for Eid. Ooh, money. Something traditional, you know. Nice. All right, let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. You can't tell me she didn't slip him that money and then he slips her back that money. That was exactly like Koki and her at the Burger King drive through She slipped him the money so that he could go like, I'm paying all performative. Same. Same. <laughs> and this also a tradition I eat sweet. Mm. I, it's like it's not that good it's a fun, it's the equivalent of opening an oreo you know what i mean you're not even baked you can't tell me that cookie's that good get them from the break bakery what and where are your new clothes for eat we haven't even gotten into this hold on god there's so much to unpack in this short little video where's your new shit for eat where is it money bags hmm Hmm? Talking about all the money this guy made during Ramadan and stuff, and y'all are okay, and no one needs these stunts on YouTube and stuff. Where's your new Eid outfit? Hmm? Where's your new Eid underpants? Where's your new Eid dish dashy? I think I'm saying that wrong. Forgive me. The traditional thing he's wearing. Dish dasha? I'm not sure how you say that. I'm sorry. The fuck is this? 
You're wearing your same shit as always. Your same tattered old crappy shit. You're supposed to get all new stuff. Why throughout this whole video have you talked about those traditional, traditional, that fucking cookie in your hand is traditional, but buying your new outfit is not traditional? Hmm. You know what they say about the new outfit for Eve, though? You buy it only if financially you're able. That's a thing. So by them not getting a new Eid outfit and flexing it on the haters on their Eid video lets me know that they aren't financially able because it's very, very much the tradition to do for Eid. Buy the new outfit. Hmm? <laughs> I love that for you. We can afford the cookies, but we can't get an outfit. How's Jason side? Exactly. We call it tamar. Ma'amul bit tamar. Yummy. Mm. Happy Eid for you guys. Happy Eid. Jesus Christ. I, I, my brain had blocked that out, Lisa. Thanks for reminding me. Thank you for the super chat. Remember when she went to her grandmother's uh, remembrance in a zebra miniskirt and a trashy wig? Well, and the timeline would tell me without knowing 100%, probably high, allegedly conspiracy, whatever. Wow. The memories, huh? So much respect. Mentally insane. Thank you for the super chat. I can't remember exactly when my mom passed. All I can tell you is in my late twenties. I can't remember the moment. Not my age though. Okay. Fair, fair. Maybe he's the same. Maybe it's like, it was so traumatic. He's to a certain extent blocked it out. I'll give him that one. Okay, that's fair. People deal with shit differently. You guys. Wow. I don't I don't know what to say beyond wow. I swear to God, I'm putting that video mentally with the Cuba Rage and Pumped Up Kicks. That was so gross. It was hard to watch, eh? Don't you feel like we just watched a long, like a whole live stream or something? That was a 10-minute video. I feel like it, it sucked the life right out of me. Holy crap. They are such assholes. Can you imagine? You, you, you fake participate in Eid. You fake pray. You fake all these fucking things. Bullshit. Thinking it's going to what save you from your sins. And then on Eid, you go and you make such a mockery out of your own mother's grave site like that. I can't even imagine it. Just absolutely disgusting to me. It's a, it's a new low with this guy. Listen, besides the, when he told everyone to off themselves and shit like that, this one, I, I can't even believe that he would participate in this. Her, we know, complete trash would do anything, you know? The fact that someone else, she found someone else on her level of manipulative nasty is actually incredible to me. Marie M., thank you for the super chat. Bob's Burgers did a beautiful episode where they visited Bob's mom's grave. I think she copied it because she doesn't know how to grieve. You might be right. She doesn't know how to grieve, right? Isn't that the whole thing with narcs? They don't know how to like behave like a human. So they're just mocking the way that like, People should, be, not mocking the way, but mimicking the way that people, let's say, should behave in the moment. Just disgusting, man. I'm really, really grossed out by that video. I can't believe it's still up on her channel. Let me, let me click and make sure before I open my big mouth that it's actually still up on the channel. But it was right before we started, right before we went live, I checked. Yeah, it's still up. 12 hours, 4,900 views. I mean, it's not really doing anything, but it's, I cannot believe that it is still up. Nasty, man. Just, wow. What the hell else is going to happen between now and the end of the month? We're clearly making big moves for the coins. Holy crap. Uh, Stassia, thank you for the super chat. Uh, wow. I'm so sorry for everyone's loss. You guys are, I get it. You know, I get, I totally, I get it. I remember I was nine when my grandma died. This is what I remember. And I, like nine, and I can still, I remember like uh, it was yesterday, you know, and that was my grandma. And I always say, I didn't really like my grandma and my grandma didn't like me either. My mom's mom, you know what I mean? It wasn't even someone like super close to me. And I still remember I was nine when it happened. I'm just saying. 
Holter Geisha, thank you for the super chat. Mom would come out of the grave and beat me down. Yeah. Can't even imagine. Just disgusting, man. Yeah, not even 5K. Wow, that was worth it. Can, yeah, exactly. Another good point. You make such a fucking stunt and stuff. 4,900 views in 12 hours. Hope it was worth it. You fucking idiots, the two of them. I can't believe it. On e, this is like it's like the cherry on the top. You finished performatively your uh, first uh, Ramadan, and then the last like Eid, like, boom! Your little cherry on top is this, this just disrespectful, sacrilegious, illegal, nasty performance. I don't know what to say. Uh, Bun Captor, thank you for the super chat, girl. Oh, cool. That's well, I mean, not cool, but you know that. Even that, look, you wiped the stone. It's more than they did, right? Just fucked up, man. They're so broke that it probably was. Mm. This is a sad life so far. Agreed. Agreed. Listen, there's no way around it. That was a super, super depressing video. That one's going in the archive. She'll delete this. She's going to get heat for that one. Everyone needs to like react to it. And then the, the heat will start building on that one. You know, she'll delete it. Fast as you can. Thank you for the super chat. Got a carb up after desecrating a graveyard. It, oh, the way she went from somber and all like that, that stupid little voice she did and stuff to, oh, and this is how we eat our falafel. You dunk it in the food. You know, like, I don't think those things should have gone together. I don't think the graveyard uh, content should have existed as a video. But if she insisted on it, that could have been a video. And then your freaking Eid meal could have been another video. Those should not have been together. Miss Movie Buff, thank you for the super chat. That hug is not a hug you give your husband, more like a hug you give your friend or family member. Yeah, or someone who disgusts you, but you're being like forced to hug them, you know? So weird, the little tap on the shoulder. Uh, Wing Skywolf, thank you for the super chat. I feel like the hug from her converting was more believable. I, I do also. Cause that wasn't him saying like, love you. It was more like congratulations on reverting, converting, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? There probably was more genuine emotion there than him going like, love you. Happy Eid. We made a, a complete farce out of Ramadan, but let's hug, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Uh, BJ Sparns. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Have a Sue mom. Hey girl. Thank you for the super chat. The soulless has uh, one has no respect for the living who protect no respect for the living, no respect for the dead, no respect for fucking anybody, anything. Your your fake husband, you're doing all that to create this whole narrative of your fake husband and your fake husband, and you you literally walked on his mother. What's the matter with you? Walked on strangers. He filmed strangers at the mosque. Neither one has respect for anybody. So fucked up, man. Rachel, hey, thank you for the super chat. His mommy issues explain Chantal. Well said. I suppose if daddy issues exist, well, mommy issues can exist too. And that creepy witch the other day was like, I'm your new mommy. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Allison, thank you for the super chat. I love this live. I'm Swedish. Well, thanks for being here, Allison. I appreciate it. Um, oh my God. It's kind of the look though. Like I'm not trying to be disrespectful. BJ Sparks, thank you for the super chat. Where I don't, okay. Okay. <laughs> breathe, breathe. First of all, they were waiting in line in the car and she was commenting how it's a tradition to go to see your loved ones for Eid. And that's why they had to wait in that long line. Okay. Why were there no other people in the graveyard? Did we notice that? Because I noticed that. And I was like, where's the people? Because there was a whole ass line. Was that the line for falafel? Are you bullshitting us? What's going on? Where was the people? They let them in one by one. That just seems ridiculous. I'm pretty sure they don't. So where did the people go that you claimed were all waiting in line to get in? It's weird. There is something fucking weird. I don't know. Why was Salad's mother the only one that had that, what looked like a, like a wooden piece around her? grave. Kind of weird. Like, I don't get it. I really don't get it. And, and again, I, like maybe this is my ignorance, but 
if they really had the money in that family that she has claimed and he has bullshitted about and stuff, and she, and the mother passed away before the Civil War started, why wouldn't she have been repatriated back to her country to be buried? In Kuwait, they're like a, a stateless people who, if they have the option, would like want to be buried in a country that, let's say, didn't want you, didn't give you papers. Wouldn't most people be taken back to their country to be buried? Like, it just, it makes no sense. None of this makes sense to me. I don't get it. It's all staged. It could be. It definitely could be. Who who knows whose grave we went to on this day? Hiding her info? Well, yeah, they were filming like the backside of the graves so that we wouldn't see, let's say, her info, you know? They covered her name. Oh, that's what that wooden thing was? I thought they were just on, because none of the graves we could see the names, but as they came in, we saw a couple. So I thought they're filming from like the backside of the graves. You know what I mean? I figured that's what they were doing. But they have covered it up with something. Okay, I guess that makes sense though. That really does make sense. BJ Sparks, thank you again for the super chat. No stray cats in graveyard, zero out of 10. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. But all their family is in Kuwait. So, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like, but, but if they're all in Kuwait, but they all have no, like are with no status, really, why would any of them be buried in Kuwait? I don't know. Like my dad, let's say he came here in the seventies. Uh, and then, okay, went back to Greece and I was born in Greece and da, 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 and they came back here, whatever, long story. But I, 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 sh I suppose I should ask him this question, but I would assume when he dies, he would still even want to be buried in Greece. He's lived here all those freaking years. The family is here, but it's not where you're from. You know what I mean? And he's Canadian citizen and stuff. Maybe this is a question I should be asking my parents. Like, mm. but it just, it seems weird to me. Seems very fucking weird to me. There, this whole video felt weird. There's something, again, everything in Kuwait is a, a little shifty to me. Like we're either not getting a full story, we're getting not a full story plus a lie on top of it. There's always something missing. Everything they tell us, everything they show us, every, you're left with a lot of question marks and nothing makes sense. And I don't like it. I like when things wrap up neatly. That's me, you know, <laughs> control freak. Karen Cross, thank you for the super chat. Maybe it can't be deleted because they're in jail. Oh, shit. <laughs> Has she community tab today? <gasps> Last community tab? Community tab. Community tab post 12 hours ago. Oh. Okay. I suppose we're on jail watch with Chantel then. Interesting. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. She's commenting on the videos. Ah, crap. Well, it was fun to dream for a second, wasn't it? Chantal's dune buggy. Thank you for the super chat. She literally tagged this with falafel. No joke, really? Falafel. <laughs> so respectful. Happy Eid, everybody. Falafel. She's been deleting comments. Okay, well, shit. <laughs> Chantal's endocrinologist. Thank you for the super chat. I'm a little bit behind, but that is the hug your mom makes you give your creepy uncle. Wow. Oh, that's fucked. Damn. Interesting. I don't, I don't have any uncles. I mean, unless they're like married to my aunts, you know what I mean? Both sides, it's only sisters and lots of them. Interesting. I don't have any creepy aunts. I have bitchy ones though. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Lunar Flower Child, thank you for the super chat. I'm 40 minutes behind, but what do you think of the theory that Salad wants to get Chins banned in Kuwait so they would be forced to move to Canada? Oh, you see, that's a fucking theory right there. That is a theory right there. <gasps> Interesting. I hadn't thought of it before. I hadn't heard it before. I love it. I believe it. We all understand his end game and even meeting her was to get himself to Canada. 
he's further from Canada now. When she, every time she's streaming and says things like, I want to stay in the Middle East together, uh, forever. We have no plans on moving to Canada. I feel like he dies a little inside every time she says it. I love that theory. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, Chantal, you have to leave. But I need to be with you. Well, the only way we can be together is in Canada. But I have my two bankruptcies and I'm fucked. Call Pete's. <laughs> Tell him to get another credit card. I don't know. Holy shit. That's a theory. That's a, that's a theory. That's an idea. Yeah, I like it. The Recovery Collective. Thank you again for the super chat. She could have added photo montages, blurred faces of the festivities with family and friends. Would death be more uplifting POV of Eid as a new Muslim? She could have, but that would have taken her going to the festivities or with family. I don't think she was invited. I think, let's say, he would have been allowed to go and eat with his family as long as she's not coming. It's one of those situations. So he locks her dumb ass in the house and goes and has a good meal with his father and sisters and whatever, you know, and their families like, hmm, interesting. Well, okay. That video, like I said, it's going into the archive. I wouldn't be surprised if she deletes that one like pretty, pretty quick. That is a mess. A mess. Oh, shit. Cuba pumped up kicks. And then there was this one. Well done, Salad. You're in the book now. You're nasty. That's your mother. Have a little fucking respect. Ugh. BJ Sparks, thank you again for the super chat. My cat is going to Kuwait to get a job as a grave digger because she buries turds in the sand all day long. Well, yellow cat. God bless. Enjoy your new job. <laughs> okay. Whew. Let's pivot away. Put it with the cheese graveyard. Isn't that funny? The cheese. I forgot about the cheese graveyard. Another scandal of Bruin for Chantal and over a graveyard. One is real and one was cheese, but they're both going to be problems for her watch. Yikes. Okay. Good thing she wasn't wearing a wig and stuff in her face in the graveyard, but like it could be worse. I suppose. <laughs> Hard pivot. I need out of this one. Like now, now. Hard pivoting out of Chantopolis. We are caught up now in Chantopolis. She hasn't done another thing. Not a post, not a word, nothing besides deleting comments. Very Chantal of her. Which means she's awake, she's on the internet, and she might be getting mad because people are starting to, to talk about, like, um, the shit going on. <laughs> the, you know, the scandal that is this video. So we may, we may get a little rager. You never know. I will keep an eye out. Anything happens, I'm recording, all right? Let's hard pivot away from Chantal. By popular demand, we are going to be finally watching... Uh, I, I almost just joked a little saying this. I can't believe I'm about to. An Amber Lynn Reed video on this channel. We are going to watch. Um, What is it called? Wait, hold on. <laughs> the tab. Amber Lynn Reed shaped by the algorithm. Episode one. Mr. Snowflake video. Okay. This is bringing it way back. Like way, way, way back to Amber's beginning on the internet. It's the only way I'm going to do this because present day Amber sickens me, pisses me off. Old day, like back in the day, Amber was my number one girl. Amber was who I watched before Chantal and all that. Maybe, maybe if we watch a little of this, we may, I don't know. I don't know. Something might click in my fucking brain again and I can stand to watch Amber again. It's what I'm hoping for. Uh, I hope for a lot of us that might happen. If not, I know that a lot of people haven't watched Amber, let's say back since like the crystal days and all the mess. Okay. Uh, it's going to be interesting for a lot of people who are maybe more present day with Amber. So there's a bunch of episodes of this shape by the algorithm. We're starting of course with episode one. I don't know if we'll do all the other ones here or on Twitch or whatever, but or if we'll ever do another one, we will see if we can even stomach her, all right? Let me get the tab and let's get into this. Amber Lynn Reed is an American plus size YouTube blogger known primarily for her weight loss journey and her mukbang videos. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Their channel has close to 200,000 subscribers and over 120 million views. Sadly for Amber though, a lot of the attention she receives from the public these days is negative. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> Well, in that case, someone get this gal a whole entire orchid because her knees are screaming for inpatient treatment. No, not fat shaming. Although we'll get to that later. Amber Lynn Reed was born the 27th of December 1990 in Key West, Florida, with the majority of her childhood spent in California, along with her two brothers. Her parents had substance abuse problems and were not always there for Amber and her brothers like she wanted them to be. Very early on in her life, Amber had... I'm sorry to cut off mid-sentence like that, but holy crap, when I see these like old videos of Amber, it brings me back. I don't know, it makes me feel young seeing Amber looking so young. Holy crap. This feels like ages ago. It's like a whole lifetime ago. Adorkable nerd. Thank you for the super chat. Huge fan of Mr. Snowflake stuff. Amazing stuff. I'm going to link Mr. S uh, Snowflake's channel in the description below, of course. Had no choice but to be acting parents to her brothers. Um, I still remember one time in particular when my parents were on so many drugs that they were like passed out. Um, my baby brother was crying and... I wasn't sure why, so I went into the room of where they were, and it was because his crib was by, was by a curtain, and the curtain string was wrapped around his neck. I will never forget that day as long as I live. Um, even now, it's emotional for me. Um, his face was purple, he was screaming and crying, and um, to put it shortly, I had to save his life. And I did. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound like a hater ass beach, but I remember this story from back in the day. I don't know if I necessarily believe this story. I never have believed this story. Um, even back in the day, when I heard this story for the first time, I looked at her like, mm, real skeptical. Now, all these years later, and knowing Amber, <laughs> and knowing the faces Amber makes and just the, the way she lies and stuff. I do not believe that story. Sorry, not sorry. Jamie's house hippos. Thank you for the super chat. And... <sighs> it was deemed not safe for Amber to be around her parents. So at just seven years old, she was taken into the foster care system. And after spending over a year in various foster homes, Amber received some truly heartbreaking news. I found out that my brother was actually going to be an adopted child. Um, he was going to be put in closed adoption, which meant I would never be allowed to see him again. It broke my heart, and it still does. <laughs> Amber would be thrown around different foster homes with her other brother, but even they would be separated for a few years. Depressed, confused, and lonely, Amber turned to food for comfort, and began putting weight on at an alarming rate. By 12 years old, she already weighed around 290 pounds, and around that same time, Amber went back to live with her biological parents. Amber, as well as the courts, now believed that her parents were fit to look after her, but they were not. They were still using forbidden substances, and Amber herself picked up some of their habits. Smoking, drinking, hanging around with the wrong people. Her brother began acting out, and he even began attacking her. It wasn't long after rejoining her parents that they separated. Her mother moved in with her new boyfriend right down the street, and as for the father, Amber barely saw him. He was too busy with his friends, who were also using illegal substances. Amber stopped caring about almost everything at this time. She had lost any interest she had for school and stopped putting any effort in. She was already not the biggest lover of school, as the other kids knew her as Fat Amber and the Smelly Kid. When she turned 18, she moved to Oklahoma to be with some of her family, including her mother. She thought it would be a new beginning, 
but of course it didn't work out. While living in Oklahoma, Amber was in a long distance relationship with a girl who lived in Arizona, and while in Arizona visiting her, Amber received a text from her mother telling her that Amber's grandmother didn't want her in the home anymore because she had had enough of her. So, my god, it's such a mess when you go back. It's like I don't I don't want to um too much like oh pity Amber and pity Amber cuz Amber's listen, a schmuck too, okay? There's a lot of shitty things. I'm sure we're going to hit on them as we go through this documentary and stuff, but you can't help but feel bad for somebody's like childhood like that. You have no control over your childhood and to be, you know, set up that bad and say, oh my God, it's, uh, it's sad, you know, to say that she started packing on the pounds at the, the time that, you know, she went into foster care and the brother was adopted and stuff might be true. But when you look at the pictures of her as a little, little kid still with her family, she was already huge. So you could tell there's already something let's say going on so you know a little oral fixation maybe going on which often would happen with people parents with substance abuse problems who are more let's say sometimes focused on getting their fix than making sure the child is receiving let's say what they need in adequate levels and then you have the overfeeding underfeeding thing going on and that's what happens you know oral fixation happens like I, I get it. But to say, oh, like as if her problems really only started and the weight only started piling on when she went to foster uh, is just not true. Amber stayed in Arizona with the girlfriend, although the girlfriend's mother was not happy about it and neither was the mother's boyfriend. According to Amber, he even threatened to kill her at one point. Amber began to fall out of love with her girlfriend. She blamed a lot of that lost love on the girlfriend's family who were making her life difficult. And she realized she should be with a girl named Crystal instead. Amber and Crystal met online and they would talk and talk and talk to one another. Amber first told Crystal that she was in love with her on the phone while sat outside a Dunkin Donuts in the middle of the night. A few months later, Crystal and her mother came to visit Amber while Amber was still living with her girlfriend in Arizona. Of course, the girlfriend did not approve of this. And it wasn't long before Amber told her girlfriend that she was in love with Crystal. After Amber and her girlfriend got in a huge argument, Amber gave Crystal a call and got on a plane to be with her, which Crystal's parents paid for. They would go on to be the parents Amber had always dreamed of. They urged her to get healthy, helped her out with money, and helped her with anything else she needed. There was like questions at the time though, when she was with Crystal, anybody watching from then remembers, why was Crystal's family, let's say, taken, taken such good care, let's say, you know, spending all that time and giving, giving Amber everything like that? Was it just them being that generous and caring of their girlfriend's girlfriend? Or was what people were saying at the time true and they had her there as somewhat of like a paid for friend a paid for almost caregiver but more more like an animator so just someone to be there with their daughter finally in that loving home she craved amber decided to make her first ever youtube video she uploaded the video in november of 2013 and it was titled Nervous Plus Awkward Plus Weight Loss Vlog. And Amber was clearly nervous, but she also seemed genuinely excited and motivated to document her weight loss journey. Hi, um, my name's Amber Lynn and I wanted to start um, a YouTube channel for weight loss. I see a lot of videos of other people doing it and it's so motivating and just something I'm really, really interested in doing. Um, I'm not even sure what to say. I guess I just think it would really help me. Um, I watch so many people who make videos, and they're so inspirational. Maybe I could be an inspiration for somebody. I don't know. I just 
I'm not really doing this for other people. I'm more so doing it for myself. But if I can help somebody along the way, then that's even better. Um, okay, girl tube, I agree with you. Annoying since day one. Yes. However, this is where she got me. This is it's it's also like Chantal at the beginning. I get suckered in by the I'm a sucker. Okay. I'm a sucker and I, I learn a lesson hard. I was so suckered in, so suckered in by this shit that Amber pulled at the beginning. The way she would with those big, the way she would make her eyes all huge to manipulate and stuff and tell you with like, it looked like such sincerity in her face that she really, really wanted to be better. I can't even tell you for how long I believed this shit that like, yes, yeah, she really did want to lose it. And she really did want to change her life. I believed her longer than I believed Chantal. I saw through like the cycle with Chantal faster. Amber, oh my God, Matt, she... I um I wish the best for Amber. I was like rooting for Amber. I was played by this witch and her massive eyes and that fucking deadpan look into the camera and stuff. Sucker. So, oh, so young and so foolish. Uh, that girl, thank you for the super chat. A lot, girl. You got to go back. It, it was one hell of a Chantal video we watched first. Oi. The timing made sense for Amber to start a new weight loss journey. She was in a safe place. She didn't have to worry about buying food, as Crystal's parents would pay for all of that, and she was in a loving relationship. It seemed the perfect time to finally get it right. I say finally because Amber had always been trying to lose weight, it seemed. Amber didn't get many views for her first video, but to the people that did watch, she came across very well. She was shy, sincere, and had a positive outlook for her upcoming journey. And those small number of views that tuned in quickly got right behind her. First off, I just... You know what? You know what? Hey, girl, hey. Like, you're right. My, and my intuition is usually much better. Although my intuition has way improved since Amber at the beginning. This is years ago now, you know? A major factor in how I got played was... Was Crystal and the parents and like how they took care i was so convinced like crystal was such a she seemed so nice and stuff and the way that the parents just went all out for amber i thought wow she must actually be like a good girl and she must really be trying you know i just want to thank everybody for your comments they were very very nice um it's very motivating and inspiring to see all these people trying to lose weight themselves and it's just Thank you for watching my first video. Um, Some things that. never change, eh? Madame may do it. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> for her first weigh-in video, Amber came in at 368 pounds. To lose the weight, she would force herself to exercise. Force herself because... Holy crap. I bet she watches that now. And she's like, like, she wishes she could be 300 and something pounds now. Look how, like relatively small she was then and how you know she could still stick and move and she, they went all over the place she could walk she could oh it's a shame she hated any form of exercise but she was motivated and determined to finally lose the weight for herself and for those watching so she began a daily squat challenge and showed us the healthy food she was eating and this is in it whipped peanut butter and chocolate mint. I love mint. I know this is probably not the healthiest thing, but coconut macaroon ice cream by haagen -Dazs. So we just got back from Red Lobster and I am legit like the bloatest bloat I've ever- She's the bloatest bloat, y'all. Back from the Red Lobster, y'all. <laughs> bloatest bloat. <laughs> Grumpy fluffy bunny. Thank you for the super chat. I agree. I agree. Just in hindsight, I feel like a sucker, you know? ever felt. No doubt because of the bad food she kept eating, Amber was struggling to get her journey off to a good start. I plan to only eat 1700 calories for this week every day besides Thanksgiving and I already messed up. And today's only the first day. Last week I weighed in at 368.0. Um, I weighed in today and I was actually up three pounds. I weighed in at 
I can't even believe. I can't even fathom. I can't even express. I can't even. I'm shocked that I am in the 370s again. I weighed in today, and when I saw the scale, I wasn't going to do a weigh-in video. I'm being 100% honest right now. I was not. Oh, Chinny's pizza box closet. Um, Allegedly, consp I don't even have to say that. This is just my opinion. I don't believe that for a second. I think she's trying to get the crown back. I think she needs a story, something to talk about. I do not believe that for one second. Not gonna do a weigh-in video. I wasn't gonna let myself. Um, I was ashamed. I was disgusted. I'm shocked. I'm. So she may have been struggling to follow a healthy diet, but what about her daily squat challenge? How was she doing with that? I started my squat challenge and I expected to finish it, but I had to stop. I did post a video about it. Um, it has to do with my back, if you haven't seen No sooner than starting her squat challenge, she had given up. And the healthy eating hadn't really got going either. It had barely been a few weeks since her first video, and she was disappointed and annoyed with herself for not following through with things. And she wasn't the only one. This person coming at me is saying I'm making nothing but excuses. Um, for me, if I'm emotionally going through a lot, losing weight is almost impossible. It, it's true. It's almost impossible for me to lose weight. Currently, I'm going through a lot with my family. And it is the holidays, and I am not willing to beat myself up. Only a person with my type of addiction, my type of struggles, can understand what I am trying to say right now. Exactly. Like, that's the moment. This is the start of the haters. The start of people seeing pattern of behavior with her, you know, still talking constantly about the weight loss, but coming on and talking about how bloaty she was from the, you know, uh, red lobster and things like, like, Hey, once you see a pattern, you can't unsee a pattern. It might take a while till you see the pattern, but once you've seen it, that's it. And that's yeah, exactly where the haters started. Clearly flustered by the one comment she received on one of her videos, Amber now told her audience that her goal all along was to actually maintain her weight until 2014. That's when the real weight loss journey would begin. Apparently, the end of 2013 was all about maintaining her current weight. When Amber did her very first weigh-in on her channel, she weighed in at 316 pounds. So, with her new goal of maintaining that weight until 2014, how did she do? But I stepped on the scale and saw 377.0 and my first reaction was, what? That can't be right. That's a flaw. So, even with her new goal of maintaining weight rather than lose any, she was not successful. Amber's audience were still very much on her side though as many could relate with her struggles. And she promised us. Yeah, there, there was also something with Amber that I find Chantal didn't have, never had. There was something, even though she kept failing, she was so convincing, God, such a manipulator, so convincing of how much she actually wanted it. And like these failures, it's like you could sort of relate to her if you, you know, struggle with the same stuff as her. I know I can, I could, you know, the, she was so much more convincing than Chantal was that, yeah, even though you spotted the, the, the pattern with her, you just, you, you freaking wanted her to be better. You know what I mean? I don't know. I believed it. Miss Allison, thank you for the super chat. That 2014 would finally be her year. However, to a few, it seemed like she was already getting in her excuses in case she failed. But I've been having this issue. My fear is extra skin and it is haunting me bad lately because I feel like I really, really, truly can reach my goal this year, but I have this fear of extra skin and sometimes I think I would rather be big than have extra skin. 
I just wish I could lose weight and not have extra skin. That's just how I wish it is, but it's not. Despite? Uh, girl tube. See, I, like, I, uh, I can't believe, are you still an ad, baby? Damn it. I, I don't believe her anymore. The way she's even openly now discussed many times on her channel, things like, well, if I would lose the weight, like no one will watch my channel. People are, aren't like good to me and I don't get views and I don't get like the, the aspects, let's say when I'm actually losing weight, it's only when I fail. And so she knows what she's doing. It's fucked up. Most of us wouldn't make like the choice, but she's made choices. The amount of money, you know, we talk about the amount of money that Chantal has blown on YouTube. First of all, I don't think Amber's blown all her money. I think she's smarter when it comes to money than she lets on. And I think there's a nice nest egg sitting there. That's my opinion. Okay. However, she hasn't spent money in a way that could have helped to solve her problem. You know, she has made so much goddamn money on YouTube. It's ridiculous. She has made more than enough money to get all the Legos and all the stupid shit she's always done and also get professional help for her eating disorder. The fact that she doesn't and hasn't after all these years and has openly, like I said, talked about the money she makes by being big on YouTube, its it to me feels like a choice. The perhaps early excuses, Amber did have a New Year's resolution the goal of losing 77 pounds by the end of 2014. 299.8 pounds was her target weight. Maybe it was her messing up so soon. Maybe it was the fact that it was a new year. Whatever it was, something definitely seemed to have clicked for her. So yesterday I did perfect. I did not eat over my calories whatsoever. I am very proud of myself and I 374.0 which is a weight loss of 2.4 yesterday i weighed in at 368.8 and today i weighed in at 367.2 it's sad too when you see how she would get like excited after losing a pound and stuff uh oceana song you're right girl oh, uh narcissists do not seek therapy you're good point good good point becky thank you for the super chat hey girl so that is down 1.6. I am doing incredible. I can't get over. I just can't get over it. I, I really think I'm going to reach my goal. Amber wasn't doing perfect by any means. She was still eating foods she knew she shouldn't have been eating. And not every weigh-in was a successful one. But she was definitely headed in the right direction. Agreed. One thing Amber has always done, right, is blow smoke up her ass for the tiniest little success. I, it loses a half a pound. I'm so proud of myself, you guys. Like, don't even fucking just, just stop it. Stop it. The tiniest thing. And oh, I need all the praise. Chantal's very much the same. But when Amber did mess up and put a little weight on, there more often than not seemed to be a reason why it wasn't her fault. I was upset yesterday because the scale was messing up and it was confusing me and this and that. Someone suggested that I change the batteries. At the time, I thought it was a good idea, but my girlfriend pointed out that it's not messing up for her. It's not messing up for her dad and it's not messing up for her mom. So it's just messing up for me. Despite the reasons or excuses why her weight wouldn't always go down, overall it was steadily dropping, and the weight should have begun to drop off even quicker when Amber was given an exercise machine, which she christened Nora. She planned on using Nora for 20 minutes every single day as part of her new 100 days of movement challenge she introduced. However, oh God, 100 days of movement. Even those two, the 100 day challenges and how stupidly they were named, that brings me back, man. The challenge was almost over before it really began. The fact that I was ready to quit my 100 days of movement so soon on day six 
because of a little, you know, back pain that I can fight through. There are people in war. There are people out there starving. There are people, homeless people, that are out there in below freezing temperatures. And I'm not going to get on the elliptical because my back hurts. Yeah, that's a big excuse. Amber rightfully got a lot of love for this, wanting to quit, looking for excuses to stop, but persevering. Janelle, girl, listen, I watched Amber longer than I've been watching Chantal. Amber was like the first one, back way, way back, since before Crystal and stuff. Um, I, I couldn't stand watching Amber since Crack at Olympics happened. There, there was a shift where, I don't know, just Crack at Olympics was so wild to me. I had never seen anything like that on the internet before. I could not go back over. At the time, Amber was not even ever leaving the house and stuff. I don't, I don't know what the fuck she's up to now. I don't watch anymore, but it was so boring compared to Crackhead Olympics and Crackhead Olympics at the time between the two of them and stuff, they were going live like hours and hours a day. The last thing I gave a shit about at the end of a Crackhead Olympic day was to go in and watch Amber in her fucking apartment uh, talking about wipey and stuff like, I don't give a shit. It was too boring. I dipped out and then I've tried to dip back in since the ending of Crackhead Olympics. I, I can't do it. I've lost all desire. It's just too boring, you know? So I thought maybe going back and watching some of these might relight the flame because I used to really be into this. I don't know. I find I'm really into the old stuff. I can still rage about this old stuff all the time. But current day, ugh, I don't know. Almost everyone who tuned into her videos could relate. But the fact that Amber wouldn't be denied by her own negative thinking held her in good stead with the fans. Overcoming an obstacle helps the audience root for you, and if they weren't rooting for her before, they certainly were now. So, how did Amber do in her very next workout video? I, um, told you guys that my back... Yeah, there was something when they moved, for me anyway, when they went to that apartment, I just dipped out. I used to really, really like Ricky... Uh, I couldn't stand Eric's channel, but I loved the interaction between all of them together and stuff. It was the side characters for me. She never brought in any side characters. And I i don't know. The vibe just changed totally. I, I don't care. Eric is, you know, very bad. I, I wanted to so badly do my 100 days of movement with the elliptical. To sit here and say that I'm gonna have to say goodbye to Nora is honestly one of the most hardest videos I've had to make. When I started the 100 days of movement, I did not have a burning hip. I'm just- Wow, imagine quitting a fitness program so quickly. Amber had told us she was going to do 100 days. Of it must break her heart now to watch this. Like if she just saw this, her herself turning in this doorway now. Oh man, that must fucking kill her. Holy shit. Yeah, no one cares. And fucking Ricky always taking his passive aggressive, like just bitchy little comments at her and stuff. I lived for Ricky. Uh, I know nothing about, don't start, maybe Ricky was also problematic. And so I don't know anything about them off of the channel because I never watched Eric's channel. I couldn't stand Eric's voice was so obnoxious to me on his own channel. I, ca I can't, but on her channel, the interaction, the way it was with like Becky and Eric, and then the way fucking Ricky just thought, in my opinion, all of them were completely useless. I mean, he loved his hand, his husband and stuff. I'm not saying anything, but when he would come home from work and stuff, it was like coming home to a house full of fucking morons who just like lit candles and drew pictures all day. Oh my God. <laughs> there was like an underlying rage in Ricky that I really appreciated. Uh. Of movement, no ifs, ands, or buts. But she didn't manage to last a full week before stopping. Or as one viewer put it, that she was quitting. Clearly, I'm not quitting. People every single day 
change their exercise routine. Sometimes you'll do the treadmill. Sometimes you'll do the elliptical. Sometimes you'll walk outside. Sometimes I have the no one cares in my archive <laughs> forever, forever. You'll do weights. Sometimes you'll go swimming. So just because I'm changing my workout, how does that mean I'm quitting? That is really confusing to me. I'm not sure why this person, you know, even has time of day to watch my videos and only comment negatively. It honestly shows that this person has no life whatsoever than to come and watch my videos and be very rude. <laughs> I understand if someone wanted to call me a quitter and I was actually quitting, but what I think makes this even more funny, and especially towards this person, is that, you know what, this is just my movement revamped and shaped into something that is better for me because I was listening to my body and I was listening to my health and I was listening to doctors and I feel like that's more important and this person can call me a quitter all they want when in reality, I've just started. Amber was now looking forward to proving the haters and doubters wrong. Oh my she carried on her 100 days of movement, but rather than use Nora, she instead opted for something easier. Chair exercises. Lifting her legs off the ground while sat down. Moving her arms while sat down. Oh no, this is too funny. Oh, I'm enjoying watching these. <laughs> this is great. So 100 days of movement was done. She didn't quit. No, no, no. Even though she quit. But she's going to prove all the haters wrong by sitting down doing this. What the fuck? <laughs> How could you stumble across her on YouTube and not watch this shit? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's just fucking insane. Just started quitting everything. Yeah. The quitting. Every time she starts something, quitting is the like consistent thing. You know she's going to quit. You just wonder how far will she get before she quits? How many days? How many hours? Um, Lady Sunflower, thank you for the super chat. It was like Ricky was coming home to a group home for the developmentally disabled, even that us giving them too much credit. I got it more like a depression house. Everyone in that house was so fucking depressed, deeply, deeply, like in their own head, in their own problems, and just, let's say, coping every single day, but not properly, not professional help, not drawings and Legos and just the, the dumbest shit you could imagine. And this guy goes off to work. He's the only one working. He would then cut the grass. Do you guys remember that? The only one who, let's say, took, uh, took care of the property. He would cook sometimes. He would do dishes. like, And he was the only one who went to work. He would come home, like, uh, coming home to the kids is the vibe, you know? Depression house. Yeah, that's how I used to really think of it. A dep Just, what should we do now? Should we draw? Okay. Should we this? Okay. Depression. And that must suck. Imagine, okay, you, you work all day, you come home, not only to, let's say, your depressed spouse, you're coming home to an entire other depressed couple, too. And this one with her money, y'all remember how she behaved when they lived together and stuff because she was probably paying a lot of the rent or God knows she acted like such a prick in their home. She really imposed herself. So you get home, you don't even get like to breathe a little. You got fucking Amber running the show all night. You know, it would piss me off too. Something where she wouldn't hurt herself like on her exercise machine. So, after trying her new, easier workout a couple of times, how was it going? I don't know if I pulled a muscle, or if I, like, sprained a bone. Like, I'm not a doctor. I have no idea. Uh... But she doesn't go to a doctor. She doesn't go and find out. She just needed an excuse on that day to stop again. Tabachnack, it was always the same shit. Alexandra K, thank you for the super chat, girl. It hurts so bad to even just walk, to to bend it, to move, to sit, to stand. Yeah, sprained a bone because that happens. So, um, I don't know what to do. The only thing I do know what to do is to put my movement on hold. So my bad news is 
there's no movement and it's not fair i was really enjoying these videos and um it just makes me sad so i i can't handle negative comments so please people please <laughs> don't leave them i i can't because i'm already sad enough i feel very let down i know this isn't my fault so i can't be mad at myself Fans needn't have worried though, Amber had a new plan up her sleeve. She had grown up loving dancing, even winning multiple talent competitions, and her dancing would be the key she told us in beating this stubborn weight, and clearly her skills hadn't abandoned her. Oh yeah. <laughs> dancing it off, of course it's all her fault. Of course, with her dangling ankle. <laughs> So now with the dancing, surely the weight would be flying off. Or perhaps it should have been, but Amber was slowly starting to fall into her old habits, simply eating too much. She needed to attack this thing harder if she was going to carry on losing weight. And she did. She joined a gym. So now she had the dancing, counting calories, and was hitting the gym. There was no way she could fail. First of all, I thought... Okay, I'm losing a lot of weight, so I'm gonna lose a lot of weight going to the gym. It's gonna make my weight come off even faster. Actually, no, I was wrong. Um, the weird thing that happened to me is that I wasn't losing weight at all. To make matters worse, I was actually gaining Oh, Bambi. Oh, Bambi. Hello, Bambi. You have joined us at the perfect time. This is like... The beginning, beginning of Amber, right at the perfect timing, baby. Wait, I shy away from exercise because I feel like it does not help with my weight loss at all. Aside from the gym experience, I've had ever, <laughs> ever, I have had other experiences with working out that prolonged my weight loss. I, I'm I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I honestly, I, I don't understand it. And um, in my mind, you, you don't need exercise to lose weight. Amber was right. You don't need exercise to lose weight. You just need to eat less calories than your body requires. And according to Amber, she had been doing that. And she knew she didn't gain pounds worth of muscle in the gym in such a short space of time. Her weight gain simply made no sense. A totally freak thing with absolutely no explanation. Much like how did James Corden manage to get his own show? Or how did Boogie manage to get over 4 million subscribers? Or how does Jimmy Bunker have any friends left? Just another one of life's great mysteries. Daddy? More often than not, Amber's videos were about her weight, but that's not all. She also did vlogs, just her filming what she did in a day. Usually it was hanging out with Crystal at home. And although her channel had been going for several months now, we hadn't really gotten to know Crystal very well. We were learning more and more about Amber. I'm actually quite fascinated by, um, you know, learning about UFOs and aliens because i think it would be very big brother starts tonight like oh my god i flip and love that show Shoes on no gloves my shirt is like freaking thin my pants are thin and i'm out here playing with this i am like insane i need to i like got up to i'm about to play grand theft auto and i was just like making funny noises i don't i don't remember what it was and i was all are you ready for it <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to say this too, that I find there's something to people at like the beginning when they start YouTube. You know what I mean? Her ego wasn't massive yet. She wasn't like Amber Lynn yet. You know what I mean? She still made a fool of herself. I mean, she still does, but it's sort of unintentional these days. She didn't care back in the day. I, I don't know. It's it's always more fun when people are new to YouTube before they start taking themselves too damn seriously. It's a problem with this platform. Veronica wants coffee. Thank you for the super chat. Happy birthday. <laughs> we weren't learning a great deal about Crystal. We knew she was shy, and that's why she didn't appear in many videos. The vast majority of viewers, though, just thought Crystal was kinda boring. And although she didn't appear in many videos at all, when she did appear, it was usually worth the wait. Aaron Berlin, why did the cow cross the road? Why did the cow cross the road, Crystal? It was utterly lost. I don't care how boring she was. I always found her endearing. And I found the way Amber tried to make her, like, come out of her shell a little. Amber just wanted someone else to be with her on the channel. Let's be real. But she was always, like, trying to get her to participate. It was funny. Jerry's Keeper, thank you for the super chat, girl. We may not have been seen as much of Crystal as we were Amber, but like I say, Crystal was very shy. So thankfully, Amber wouldn't do anything to embarrass her on camera. Yeah, right. Crystal's getting them tampons. You go, girl. Get it, get it, get it. She's getting the gentle glide playtex. Because you need that gentle glide. <laughs> Crystal and Amber seemed very happy together. And Amber seemed to be enjoying living with her and her parents and their chubby dogs and cats. A real little family. Everything was going well. Perhaps a little too well. Amber got a little too comfortable, and she started to do less weigh-in videos. Many people had been watching her to see her either succeed or fail at her weekly or even sometimes daily weigh-in videos. But without them, Amber began to focus more and more on vlogs. Many of her videos were titled Life with Amber Lynn, followed by whatever the date was. But the problem Amber had is that she didn't have much of a life to film. So here's the... <laughs> Consistency, never had. But it didn't matter until Crack at Olympics. And yeah, I agree with you guys. The, that dog's nails were way too long. Madame Maidur, thank you for the super chat. Amber would be the most horrible person alive if she lost weight, except for one person, and that's Chantal. The two of them, <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. I just got goosebumps. Sink, Avi, dishwasher, Avi, and counter. Okay, so we have all these little things right here. And then this drawer. Fried eggs and spam. You're right, girl. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. And we use those for everything. Wipe off counter, wipe off our hands, dry dishes and stuff like that. Hell yeah, Mandy. Thank you for the super chat. We mentioned it when, when Crystal first came into this documentary, right? That was the whole thing. Why are the parents being so generous with Amber? Is the rumor true? Well, rumor that she was paid to be some kind of like a friend. I, I don't want to say caregiver. She wasn't like wiping her ass or anything, but she was there to be with Crystal, you know? Yep. Little soap operas. There's drama. There's twists. There's turns. There's romance. But this is how many episodes. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but watch. That's a whole page. That's a whole page. That's a whole page. That's a whole page. That's a whole yeah, page. Yeah, that's a perfect. A paid companion. Exactly. That. 
that? Who cares? <laughs> Who gives a fuck? I think I'm just gonna end my vlog though for today. I know it was probably like the most boring vlog I've ever done because I feel like it was super boring, so my apologies. Um Although, to be fair to Amber, not every vlog was dull. Some were genuinely epic. But I just want to kind of show you, because I think it's funny to look back at it. So. Yeah, we color the first page, and the only reason why there's hearts is because I like to see what color crayons I'm using. Ah, the coloring! Yeah, she, you know what? Even she does. She bores herself. She always has bored herself because she has fuck all to do and always have. I normally don't like leaving things white, but for some reason, this just suited this one for some reason. I love that green color. <laughs> See, this one was pretty plain Jean, but I tried to, you know, still color it. However, I could. Oh me. my this god. <laughs> I love that white, so I thought it looked cute. Oh, I like this one a lot. Purple hair. And this one I had to do what they said. I like when I do the flowers like that. Which one? Oh, listen, I like adult coloring too, but this is all she had to do. She, she made this video because she had nothing else to talk about on this day. The love. <laughs> That's funny. Oh yeah, I like that one too. So as you guys can tell, we like to color. It's just fun sometimes. Ah! Ah! Shut up! This went on for some time. Amber filming things she found interesting, but hardly anybody else did. And her views began to reflect this. People clearly tuned in for either her weigh-in videos or her discussing her weight loss journey. Eventually, Amber began to realize this herself. Um, at first when I was making... And that, in a way, was the problem, right? When she would do anything else, no one was watching. No one was people were watching for the the weight loss the alleged weight loss content and then holy crap people were watching for the mukbangs the videos of everything i was eating you guys were freaking loving that absolutely loving that youtube is such a crazy place honestly because it really opens your eyes to certain things and it actually is a very big learning experience and i'm just ready to do what i did before before you know realizing people wanted her videos to be about her weight and not her coloring in amber went back to focusing on weight loss i really want to follow through on 100 days of weight loss and um this book i think it could really help me and with my so I actually set myself a goal last night to lose 100 pounds by August 15th. That's like three months away. Um, it, it makes me nervous because that's a lot of weight for me to lose in such a short amount of time. But I just, I, I really, really, truly want to lose 100 pounds, and it's just, oh, I want it so bad. Amber got a new book that was all about weight loss, and she was convinced it would help her. She would even read chapters aloud in her videos. With this new book in hand, Amber gave herself just three months to lose 100 pounds overall. And three months! <laughs> At this point, it was a gimmick. At this point, three months, she has failed since she started her channel. She has gained weight. Her goal had become just to not gain any weight, and she failed that goal too. She knew damn right she would never lose 100 pounds in three months, but that sounds shocking. You could put that on a video title. At this point, she had figured that out, and that's what she was doing. As she had lost a little weight on her own before she started to upload to YouTube, 
although we don't have any video of this, of course, so we just have to take her word for it. She said she was only £37 away from losing £100 in total. At the time, she weighed in at £358. It should have been a realistic goal, but the problem was that any time Amber was feeling bad, she would eat more than she should, and the more videos she uploaded to her channel, the more negative comments she received. Amber at one stage thought the vast majority who watched her videos were rooting for her or watched her because they liked her. But slowly, she began to understand this was simply not the case. Everybody, I am very frustrated right now. As you can tell, my face is probably red and my eyes are probably red. Um, I have people bothering me. And um, now someone's telling me that their exact words in a comment on here is... Someone you speak with regular, regularly is telling people she is going to contact the publisher of the book you're reading for reading for reading it on YouTube. Be careful, you have more haters than you think you do. Sorry for the clicking. Crystal's currently playing rock band. I guess there's people behind my back who want to, like, go to the publisher, the author. The publisher, the author, yeah. Because at this point, you knew you had your haters. Exactly. This is the haters. This is where the shit all started. You wanted to be trolling. This is what you got for it. I mean, it disgusts me that I have people watching my videos that dislike me and to want to contact an author to get me in trouble, which I didn't know this was like some bad thing, is absolutely shocking to me. So, I mean, I'm, well, I'm gonna stop reading it. Don't f***ing worry to the person who wanted this to happen. Don't worry, you got your way. Yeah. Sometimes I'm, I'm this close to just saying, I'm not strong enough for YouTube. I don't have that tough skin like I thought. And I'm just, ugh. I mean, I can handle, you know, people saying I do nothing with my life. I can handle people saying, oh, you need a job. I can handle all of that. Um, oh, you shouldn't eat Doritos because they have carbs. Um, but the fact that someone wants to go that hardcore into trying to get me in trouble there are like one or two, maybe three people who are a little. I've sped her up because it's uh, it's kind of slow whining. Ugh. A little freaky and creepy when it comes to stalking and just kind of being rude. Um... Amber really needed to toughen up if she was going to survive on YouTube. Every YouTuber has to deal with trolls at some point. She was only a small channel and compared to the bigger channels like PewDiePie, T-Series and Mr. Snowflake, she barely got any negative comments, but the few she got she clearly didn't like, and it wasn't like the majority of the negative comments she received were really bad, they simply pointed out that a weight loss channel, where the person never loses weight, is a bit silly. We've seen many people go crazy dealing with haters and trolls online, only time would tell if Amber would be one of those people, but she definitely needed to toughen up, or at least stop letting the trolls know how much they were affecting her. At first, her videos were supposed to be Amber being accountable for her weight loss, that was the point of the channel. But now, Amber was asking people to just like her. And please, like my video. Let me know. I don't know. I half agree with that and half disagree. I half think that she really started going at the people when she saw the reaction. And it, it the views started going up and she was getting those, the haters and stuff. As much as she didn't like the criticism, she could never take the criticism, this started something on the channel. So she kept it going. You care, and you're there, and you, you like me. Okay, bye. I think more than anything, I feel like for someone to be accepted and liked, you need to be yourself, and you need to be able to be open with people. And I think that's why I put myself out there so much, and I'm completely myself. Because I don't like, you know, fake people. I don't like to be, you know, disliked. I don't want to be... The more and more videos she made, the clearer it became that she wanted people to like her more than she wanted to lose weight. She had only been on YouTube around six months at this point, 
but already it was all getting a little much for her. I am just feeling stressed, and I don't want to bring in, like, the haters on my channel, because there's only, like, two. One, mainly. And I'm just not strong enough for that, and I hate people who pit, nitpick at everything and think they know everything, and I just can't handle it. It's way too stressful for me, and that's not why I started YouTube, so... Oh, yeah, it seems very familiar because um, as much as we were all watching Amber, Chantal was also watching Amber back in the day. Remember that Chantal kind of followed Amber and always wanted what Amber had in terms of like the views, the money she was making on YouTube. She did the steps on her channel to make her her channel, let's say, as much like Amber's as she could. So, of course, this crap all seems familiar. Chantal's played the same game with us forever. I don't want nothing to do with that no more. <laughs> I just feel like... Ugh. I don't know if I can do it anymore. Or at least for right now. So what I'm trying to say is I'm just going to take a break from this whole um, YouTube thing. The break she figured would cool the trolls off and it would be good for her mental health. It was a very good idea by Amber. Nothing is worth ruining your mental health, especially words on a computer screen. So, how much of a break did she give herself? Well, it was only three days. Three days may not seem like a big break, but to be fair to Amber, she did tell us if she had anything important to say, she would make a video. So, what was so important, she just had to make the video. Lately, I've been peeing, like, I'm a horse. I know that's probably TMI, but I'm just, like, peeing all the time, and I cannot stop. Uh -huh. But it wasn't just her toilet habits that Amber needed to share with her audience. In the same video, Amber let everyone know that it was going really well not uploading. And yeah, I am just doing really good and um, video on just how I'm doing and just kind of say hi to you guys. It feels very... I love that. A video telling everybody how good it feels to not upload and she uploads it. <laughs> I love that too. Foodie, be jealous. Amber, like me. Frenchie, fuck everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very weird not to be filming always talking to you guys it's just so weird <laughs> i just want you guys to know i i love posting videos and i'm not gonna stop it's you guys are never gonna get rid of me unless you unsubscribe that'd be sad though <laughs> i'm doing great and i just wanted to say hi 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 to every single one of you i'm i'm so used to waking up and being like good morning everybody you know just how i do it but I haven't done that in a couple days and it feels really weird but anyways i'm gonna end this video now and i've been just itching to film some so i just wanted to tell you guys i just felt like updating you guys and just letting you know how i'm doing and i am doing amazing yes she uploaded a video telling her fans she was enjoying not uploading any videos over the next week so amber uploaded up. six new videos it appeared as though taking a break was something amber just couldn't do YouTube had become part of her normal life now, and it was beginning to seem she needed YouTube just as much as she needed food. So after her three days break, Amber was back and was even more determined to lose the weight. Now she had extra motivation to shut up those trolls, and she knew the best way to shut them up was with results. But um, I've been just doing really good, and I've been in a positive place, and I thought today would be a perfect day for, you know, a random weigh-in, and um... I'm just really excited for you guys to hear about my results. So obviously there has been, you know, a few obstacles in my way, just as always, but I've conquered them and I've passed through them and I'm happy. I'm in a really good spot and I'm feeling really, really proud of myself. So on Monday, I weighed in at 357.6 and today I weighed in at 351.2. So that is amazing and it's a weight loss of six. This week has been amazing, absolutely amazing. Today I burnt 572 calories in under an hour just from dancing. I feel incredible. I have not felt this good in a long time. And I've been really just, I've been really wanting to be in the 340s and I'm finally in the 340s and I'm just so happy. So last time I weighed in, I was at 351.2. Yeah, Andy B, in my opinion, Chantal definitely learned this game from Amber, but she was never as successful at it as Amber. She wasn't as convincing, let's say, as manip she's as manipulative, but not as convincing of a manipulator. I don't know. There was something extra about the way Amber did it. And that's why Amber always had the crown.
this, there was, I don't know, I want to say more going on and yet also nothing going on, but she was always a little more likable than Chantal was. And today I was at 349. Yeah, you guys, no, not gonna... always. You know what? There came a time where everyone hated her fucking guts. But at the time, at the beginning, she was more likable. Yeah, more genuine. That is a good word for it. Thank you. More genuine seeming than Chantal was. That's really good. I'm proud of myself. I am beyond proud of myself for um, the progress I'm making. And I'm just doing really good. I'm making better choices. And I'm eating healthier and eating smaller portions and I feel so much better. I'm drinking tons and tons of water and it's definitely showing because I'm losing weight and I'm just proud of myself. I absolutely enjoyed working out like that and it felt amazing. It felt good. So as you guys remember, yesterday I did a crazy workout. Like literally my legs hurt so bad. My arms are just okay, but my thighs, oh, I don't even have words for it. Like it hurts so bad to move my legs or to sit down. Like that's the worst. Like I went to the gym today and just had a ball like i really really enjoyed it and i'm so happy i can do it again this. i look like a hot mess because again i just got back from the gym <laughs> so did amber manage to lose the 100 pounds in total in august like she said she would well no she didn't but to be fair to amber as it grew closer to august she changed it saying she would like to lose the weight by september instead giving her a bit more of a chance to do it so did she lose the 100 pounds in september like she said she would well, no she didn't. Sadly for her, she didn't manage to make it. But it didn't make sense to her that she didn't accomplish her goal, because in her mind, she had been doing absolutely everything possible to do it. And because in her mind she hadn't put her foot wrong, she needed to find reasons as to why she failed to accomplish her goal. What's confusing about that is I'm doing everything perfectly. I'm weighing everything, I'm measuring everything, I'm going to the gym. Oh yeah, Jay Frankie, listen, listen, of course, I know all about Twinkie's nails, and the cats, and the giving away or just getting abandoning of the cat. Like, listen, there's stuff coming. But at this point in Amberverse, we didn't know anything about that. Like the, the, none of that existed yet, you know? Jim, I'm drinking tons of water. I mean, I'm an obese girl, so you'd imagine I lose weight faster. I just want to say that's purely my body's fault because I'm doing everything in my power to lose this weight. And, but duly note, like I've even said this in my vlogs, I have... A very confusing period so it's unfortunate i don't know if maybe i'm just not losing weight as fast because i am having that issue it is that time of the month where i am having that issue where my body wants to have my period wants to have its period but it's like not fully coming so i'm like semi on it semi off it's like there and then it's not i honestly hate it i wish i was just like a normal girl who got her period once a month for like the what five days you're supposed to get it so i didn't have to worry about it yeah absolutely there's a lot of shit. Like I said, there's a lot of shit when people say, well, uh, Amber's not a bad person like Chantal and Amber doesn't, you know, she's not as much of a mess as Chantal. No, 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 no. It's just that a lot of time has passed since the messiest shit with Amber and people tend to have short memories, you know? So we remember Chantal's stuff because it's more recent. Amber's stuff is disgusting and we're going to get there through these, um, like looks back the timeline let's say of amber there's psycho shit in amber's past disgusting shit in amber's past the kitten grace hmm? the treatment of the dog oh the god the way she threw the dog the way she let her own dog become and the nails and the body and the it's fucked and that's just about the animals it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's annoying. And I, I have been going to the gym. I have been counting calories and eating good. And the scale almost betrayed me because I was expecting something grand. Um, I'm extremely obese. So you'd assume I'd be down a good amount of weight by eating the right foods and counting calories and going to the gym. And might I add, I'm kicking butt in that gym. Even can't even. It's mind boggling to me how amazing I'll be doing. I'll rely on the scale. The scale will fuck me over, make me feel like none of this is worth it. I'm kicking my butt in the gym for nothing. I'm counting calories for nothing. I'm doing all of this for nothing. I made zero mistakes. I was just doing so good and bodies are not meant to be this heavy. 
and I feel like soon my body will understand what I'm doing and then melt away, I'm hoping, <laughs> all because the scale did me wrong. Um, if you guys have some words of encouragement or some motivation or inspirational quotes or even just advice, I'd love, love for you guys to leave that in the comments below. I she blamed her body for not losing weight, blamed the scales. She even blamed her period. She oh, it was way more than a year that she wore that bra. Way more. Like, it's years. Correct me if I'm wrong, but she only got that bra, a, a different bra, and like, while well, she lived with Ricky and uh, Eric. Towards the end. He may have thought she didn't put a foot wrong, but we knew that wasn't the case. Amber was simply trying to convince herself, as well as her viewers, that she was not to blame. But we all knew what really happened, because we had been following her journey. No, I spent the last three weeks, 21 walking days, eating whatever I wanted. And I want to say out of like 19 of those days, out of 21, I literally ate like hell. Like, I ate like I was dying the next day. I ate whatever I wanted, and I ate an abundance of it. Here's red velvet, um, what are these called? Cupcakes. Then I'm gonna get ready to go. We're actually going out to eat again today. Crystal and I ordered, yeah, you can put this in the icebox. Crystal and I ordered Chinese food today because we're home alone. I just want to say that I've been doing really bad. I haven't been counting calories. I've been eating horrific, horrific, and... Your order was placed, and then prep, and then bake, and then quality check, and then delivery, and it, like, shows you. Before we go grocery shopping, we're gonna go to some, I guess, some new Mexican place, so, um... It's hot. It's hot. Last night, I was, like, so hungry. We both were. So we both went down to the kitchen, and I stuffed my, stuffed my face with chips. So she went up, and the, the lady said, go choose whatever you want. So Crystal's mom came back with pizza and fries, so fail so i got a really big icy pina colada i know freaking horrible and then i got a churro and then i had um a pretzel with cheese it was just all around it was hard because when you're when you do a lot of exercise you do get hungrier it's a proven <laughs> it's a proven fact you get hungrier these are the day i would come home from work and like watch the amber content of the day and just throw my hands up like amber no you know like what a, what are you doing what are you doing I don't remember exactly where I stopped believing that she actually wanted to lose weight and was really trying. But I think by this point, I was already like, yeah, this is some bullshit. This is you have figured out how to get the views now. This is this is your cycle. This is your game. In fact, really, really, really bad and sucky news. And I kind of just fell off the wagon and um, I couldn't get myself back up. And then vacation came along. Uh, we ate out about two to three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. First thing I ate was fast food and literally I felt so sick. And then where do I go? I go to a buffet. She was feeling kind of hungry, so. Not the buffet. So, um, we're like, okay, let's go to Taco Bell. I weighed in today, August 11th at uh, 367.0. So I'm up 8.6 pounds. In Emma told us she would often go back and watch her old videos. But if she had, surely she would have realized what she had been doing, and why she didn't reach her goal. She also had this habit of every time she failed to lose weight in one of her weigh-in videos, she would mention the time in the past how she had lost 89 pounds. I, The famous 89 LBs. For anyone who didn't watch Amber back in the day and like hears of the 89 LBs and probably wonders where the fuck did it come from. Amber has claimed to have lost 89 LBs in the past. It's always this, like, this crazy story from in the past. There was never any loss of 89 LBs. This is like her own like urban legend that she convinced herself of and tried to convince everyone else of. There was never an 89 LB loss. I do go back to the point where, yeah, I lost 89 pounds myself. I know how to lose weight, 110%. Um... My past with weight loss, I lost 89 pounds. It's hard for me to remember how I did it and how I got through it and how I lost, um, what, 80, 89 pounds. And I'm not a know-it-all, but this this is my journey. And in my journey, I lost 89 pounds by eating Doritos. I lost 89 pounds my way. Amber clearly felt <laughs> shame every time she failed at a weigh-in. It was as if she was trying to show people that she actually was capable of doing it. She knew how to do it and didn't need to listen to any of the advice being offered to her. She did it once before, and she could do it again, if she really wanted. 
Her way was the right way, it was her journey, and everyone else was wrong. One bit of advice that kept coming up in her comment section was to choose smaller goals, week by week, month by month, rather than this huge goal at the end of the year. But the more advice people offered her, the more she resisted against it. It was okay that Amber didn't lose the weight in her newly allotted time though, because her channel was not a weight loss channel after all. Um, this channel is not a weight loss channel whatsoever, it's a, um, as of right now it's a vlog channel. It's a channel about my life. I'm an over overweight person, we all say that. Even that was a troll, at this point troll Lynn is alive and well, okay? Saying something like, this isn't a weight loss channel when the only thing you keep doing is this weight loss, weight gain, weight loss, weight gain, because that's when you're getting your views. That was trolling in full effect. That I'm fat, I'm obese. That's part of who I am, but it's not who I am. So this is not a weight loss channel. And I just kind of want to stress that to people. Um, not only is this not a weight loss channel, it's just a channel about my life. It's my vlogs. I don't care if I'm talking about a book or if I'm talking about a snowman or the weather or a chair or it's just random. It, it's not a weight loss channel. And someone said that my weight loss channel is a joke. <clears throat> I just want to say I'm not a joke. And um, I think more than anything, a joke would be me coming on here and lying about my struggles. And I'm not. Um, it, it's hard for someone to lose weight. I know maybe some people are a lot better at it than others, but um, losing weight is part of my life. And that's why I do show that on here. And um, if I do it the wrong way, if I fail or anything like that, I don't think it's anyone's right to judge me. And I do appreciate everyone who, you know, sticks around and watches my videos, whether I am stuck in a rut or not. So, so another one where it's nobody's right to judge me, watch my stuff, but don't leave me any mean comments. Don't criticize me. Don't give me advice. I know what I'm doing. I've already lost 89 LBs eating Doritos. You know, don't, just don't give me advice. I'm the professional. Just keep watching. I need your coin and shut the fuck up. I kind of just wanted to clarify if you guys have any questions. I kind of just wanted to express that of some sort. <laughs> Again, not a weight loss channel. I don't want to be the cliche weight loss channel. I don't want that at all because I'm not. I'm a vlogger. I vlog my life. Um, weight loss channels don't do that. So, again, not a weight loss channel. Not a weight loss channel. Okay, I think I've said that too much. In the beginning, it may have been a weight loss channel, but after she had started to mess up on the scales far too often and people began calling her out, Amber started to tell people it was no longer a weight loss channel, that the weight loss was only a very small portion of what it was. The channel was all about her and her interests. So she may have failed that goal of losing £100 in total by September, but her overall goal of £299.8 by the end of the year was still on. Well, it seemed it was still on, but then Amber changed her end of year goal. I want to be 331.0 pounds in 121 days, which will be on December 31st. Okay, so she changes the goal. In theory here, who cares if she changed the goal? It's only 31 pounds away from what her original goal. Wouldn't even matter. If she could get to 331, that would have been a blessing. The point is, what was the point of changing the goal? You know, damn right, you're not going to do this. You're going to quit after a few days. This is crap. There'll be weight gain. There won't be loss. You can change the goal all you need to. It's not going to change the outcome. I know many of you know that I suck at goals, but I'm going to try my hardest. So to get to that goal, I have to lose 35.8 pounds. Yes, Amber wanted to weigh 331 pounds by the end of the year. There were lots of comments supporting Amber in her newly changed goal, many saying the weight didn't matter anyway. All that mattered was that Amber was happy. But she wasn't. I just feel absolutely 150,000% like I'm about to die. Like, I feel miserable, you guys. I just feel like such crap and Amber didn't just make one video telling us she was unhappy, she made multiple. She was so sick of doing well, then letting it all slip away. She was tired of not following through with what she said she would. It had now been almost 11 months since Amber first started on YouTube, so how much weight had she lost in that almost 11 months? As many, many, many of you know, um, since I started YouTube of November of last year, I'm actually up weight. I'm not up like 20 pounds or anything like that. I'm up probably about six, I think. Yeah, I'm up about six pounds. Um, 
And as also, as many of you know, I will. And like in her mind, that was probably a win. She's only up six pounds in the almost year that she's had her channel. The channel that was supposed to be a weight loss channel. A woman who threw those 89 LBs on our face for fucking years. She talked about those goddamn 89 LBs. Six pounds up after almost a year. Oy, oy, oy. Just, yeah. Uh, hold on. Was it Bambi? She's well over 500 pounds now. I haven't watched her in a while, so I couldn't tell you the exact number. I'm sure somebody in the chat knows it, but well over five. See here, and I will lose a really good amount of weight, and then I'll just gain it all back, and then I'll even gain more. And why is this happening? Um, I'm kind of here to answer that question. I'm sure many of you know the answer, but there are some of you who um, are probably wondering, like, why why does Amber Lynn um, not lose weight? Why does Amber Lynn gain weight? So I kind of just wanted to make a real quick video to kind of sum up the reasons why this happened. When I'm losing weight, I know how to lose weight, 110%. Um, my past with weight loss, I lost 89 pounds in just about six or seven months. 11 months so far on her weight loss journey, and she had put weight on. How could this have happened? So when people watch my videos, I don't want anyone to think I can't lose weight. I don't know how to lose weight because I'm actually a pro at losing weight. 89 LBs, don't forget. She's going to remind everyone again. She's a pro, guys, at losing weight. But she's gained six in the year that she's had her channel. How could she have done it? What's gone on? Blah, blah, blah. Because you never went and took care of the underlying issue. Damn it. And that's why it'll never change. But you know that, troll Lynn. Um, if I was to, like, out of all the weight I've lost, like, over and over again, I've probably lost almost a 1,000 pounds because I know how to lose the weight. You know what that sounds exactly like to me? A gambler. You ever go to a casino and some schmuck will be like on a, I don't know, like a, one of those like, um, shit, I forget the name. Where you put in the coin, like the, and they spin. I, I'm so not a gambler. I can't even remember what they're called. A slot machine? Okay. So you go to, you're at a casino and there's some schmuck sitting there at a, a slot machine and you get into a conversation. They're going to tell you about all the money they've won over the years over at the casino. They never, ever tell you about all the money they lost. Oh, I've won $50,000 over the year. Really? How many hundreds of thousands did you lose to win that 50? So her throwing up, I've lost 89 LBs. I'm a pro at losing weight. Look at all of the weight I've gained. For every pound you've lost, you gain two. It's the same as any other addiction, trying to like hide the bad. Unfortunately, when it's eating addiction, food addiction, we can see that you're lying to us. Pro at losing weight. Shut up. My issue is, why do I keep gaining weight then? It's simple. I stop caring almost. I give in to foods that I shouldn't have. I am a food addict. I'm an emotional eater. I'm a binge eater. And all these things added into one, like, causes just a tornado of mess. I don't even know how to describe it. Um, it's not about that I can't do it. It's not about that I don't know how to do it. Because I can do it and I do know how. I've done it so many times. Even as I sit here right now, I know exactly how to lose weight. I know exactly. Oh my God, Dominique, thank you for the super chat. I'm so glad you got it, number one. And I'm so glad you love it. But how could you not? It's delicious. Exactly how to do it. Amber was a binge eater, especially when she was sad or under stress. And unfortunately for her, she was under a lot of stress lately. Okay, there will always be haters. I need to have a tough skin, this and that. But I feel like if you're going to watch my fucking videos, then you shouldn't disrespect me. You are not the one making videos, opening your life to the world to watch. I'm just getting really fed up, especially when my girlfriend's involved. I'm tired of fucking people calling her disabled and telling her she has like a weird personality or whatever you guys do not do not 100 know her and i am tired of it you can say what you want to me i'm fat i'm gross i'm lazy i'm this i'm that yes it hurts me yes it affects me but i can ignore it more but when crystal's involved i do not like it if i have subscribers who are dicks and apples i don't want to be on youtube anymore i am literally i don't want listen to the threats also sounds familiar, doesn't it? Here's what I think was the problem. 
Crystal was affected by the negative comments directed at her. She didn't want, that's part of why she didn't want anything to do with YouTube. She was shy. She This was not her channel. It was not her thing at all. And when she was getting those messages, it bothered her. And I think maybe she mentioned how much it bothered her or her to her parents or her parents saw that she was like affected by something, you know, something was bothering her and they got it, let's say out of her what it was. And maybe, maybe they told Amber to like figure out a way where she's not involved. She's not getting hateful mess uh, comments, messages, whatever. Or maybe you wouldn't be needed anymore as like a caregiver. And she saw, she wanted the YouTube money still, but the YouTube money at this time wasn't huge yet. So she also wanted that alleged thousand dollars a month she was being paid to be like a companion. It's always been my theory. She's never been this protective. When she came out in this, this video specifically, she's never been protective of Crystal ever. It was always sort of the opposite. Um, like it was pointed out in here, she would purposely kind of throw Crystal under the bus sometimes, humiliate Crystal purposely on camera. It was weird that she came out so protective. Something must have been fucking with her money. I'm just tired of it, you guys. Fuck, tired of it. I did not start YouTube for rude comments. For starting YouTube, I thought it was going to be such a positive experience and such a great experience. And um, no because I'm getting so much heat and I just cannot deal with it. I have too many issues in my real life that you guys do not know about. I do not tell you guys everything. I do not show you guys everything. You guys only know what I allow myself to tell you guys. Does all of these, like this entire uh, little monologue sound familiar to us who normally watch Chantal? It's Chantal learned from Amber. Hmm? So, for the people who enjoy my videos, I'm just, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. I have tried to put up with this for, I just can't stand it. Crystal is not fucking disabled. I so badly, for the people who are probably watching this and they're like, whoa, Amber Lynn, what's wrong? I don't understand. I have to read some of the things that people are saying to me because some days it's so, it's so extreme that I sit, I sit behind the freaking uh, computer or my phone and I cry. I mean, I shouldn't have to deal with that. And I feel like by stopping making, by me stopping YouTube videos is actually going to make me feel like less stressed. I'm gonna feel happier because I'm not gonna have to worry every day when I click on YouTube, oh my God, thumbs down, people don't like me or oh my God, I can't. I can't, so I am so sorry everybody. This is my last YouTube video and I'm just done, so. There will not be, oh, I'll see you in my next video because there's not going to be a next video. I wish you all the best to those who have supported me. I love you all. Trust me. Like, you are the reason why I kept going for so long. But I can only take so much. And my girlfriend can only take so much. She tries to be strong, but I know she hates it. So, I mean, this hurts me to, like, end this. But it just has to happen. Um, I'm done. This whole thing, y'all can tell, is completely fake, right? You can almost see a smirk sometime as she's saying, like, this is my last video and blah, blah, blah. This, in my opinion, was done for Crystal's parents because they told her what's up and that she was about to lose that $1,000 a month and a place to live. So she made this gesture defending their daughter and saying that she was done and everything. It was performative and it was for the parents and partly for Crystal. The smirk on her face that duper's delight Let's us all know she'll be back. She's coming back. And when she comes back, you'll watch, you'll click, she'll get more views because she's been gone and threatened to quit. Done. My heart is like literally broken. It was nothing like I expected because I honestly didn't think I was going to be judged. For I thought people were going to be like, wow, I love this person because she's real, honest, raw. I love her girlfriend because she's such a little cute, shy thing. I don't know. But... <laughs> I just, I honestly wasn't expecting this. <sighs> Goodbye. And again, <sighs> this is actually kind of hard. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go now. So, <sighs> goodbye.
I got so many sweet and loving and caring comments from you guys and I honestly didn't know that so many people cared or so many people watched me and um, thought of me as you know a good person and a person who struggles but is honest about it I am just so grateful and I honestly was done with YouTube I thought YouTube was the issue but no it's it's not um, I just didn't want to believe it I didn't want to you know I thought the haters are coming from YouTube so why not just quit YouTube but something about it just didn't feel right I, I don't live this perfect life it's it's far from that and I struggle with my weight because of you know commotion and just this crazy mindset I have and I'm raw about it and I'm real about it and I show it to you guys and you guys still consider me an inspiration and did Amber exactly like Chantel that's right oh you guys all the positive comments like I had to come back and I you know guys I love you guys and I love doing this and blah 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 yesterday's video was performative for the parents of Crystal and partly for Crystal. She knew damn right she was back. You could see it written all over her face. Now, did I know she'd come back the next day? No, but neither one has any self-control. We've learned that with all of their impulses and addictions. So why the hell not come back the next day? Who does that remind you of? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, really mean it when she said she was quitting YouTube or was she just trying to manipulate people? Amber was not going to let the trolls win. Yes, she had failed to lose weight in the past, and in her YouTube journey, she had done pretty poorly so far. But shutting up those haters was now the real goal. Lose the weight, sure, but it was not just to feel good about herself, or to fit into clothes she hadn't worn in years. It was to shut up those horrible trolls. Not only was she going to prove them all wrong, she was going to prove herself wrong for all the times she doubted she could do this. But could she? Could she lose roughly 40 pounds in only two months? And get down to 330. She quickly got back on track and seemed to be having more fun on YouTube than she had for a while. <laughs> In boxing, they say a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter, and Amber was happy and fighting tooth and nail to beat this. She had struggled with her weight since she was a young child, growing up with a neglectful family, turning to food, making food her best friend. Oh, that's really interesting. Thunder Rain, thank you for the super chat. 100% she recorded this immediately after filming the other one, probably before even uploading it. I swear to God, I wouldn't put that past her. Very interesting. <laughs> you miss these days? So do I. Look at her. At least she was outside. Doing, I remember that stairs video. I remember the, what did they call the, um, the ice bucket challenge video and how ridiculous all this shit was. I don't know. Yes, Crackhead Olympics did make her seem boring, but undeniably her own content isn't what it used to be. It's not just Crackhead Olympics that made her irrelevant. She did a good job of doing that to herself, you know? Uh, Dreaming Fool 2, thank you for the super chat. Amber's new upload, Jade dragged her to a Roots 101 museum. Really? Amber didn't look very enthusiastic. Oh boy. She had struggled in school being called names. She had struggled in her young adult life. She had even struggled with her first year on YouTube. So, did she do it in the end? Did she hit that £330 goal by the end of 2014, like she said she would? Well, I don't know. I don't know because Amber did not film a weigh-in video at the end of the year like she said she was going to. In fact, for the entire month of December, there was no weigh-in video in sight. and no. But that's all we need to know. If Amber had hit the goal... She would have filmed the shit out of it. She would have made content about it forever. We would have heard about it forever. She didn't make any weigh-ins in the month of December, and she never made a, a video about that goal because obviously she never hit the goal. ...videos discussing her weight. Her audience knew her well enough now to know that this was not a good sign. Her viewers waited and waited for her next weigh-in video, but she didn't upload one until the beginning of January 2015. And well, I actually will be weighing myself today, and I haven't weighed myself in I don't know, whatever my last I weighed myself. And I honestly thoroughly can't believe this. Like, I can actually admit 
right here and right now that I made a really big mistake. I used to be down 89 pounds. Something you guys will learn from me is that I do not cry when I gain weight. I almost don't care. For a long time, I didn't care. But I am just so... I honestly can't believe it. And then a part of me is like, actually, yeah, I can believe it. I'm just heartbroken. I'm so mad at myself. I really hate to cry on camera, but it's just how it is. I'm just really, like, devastated. She loves to cry on camera. Just P.S. Every time when she would um, gain weight, she would cry about it because she thought, as a lot of people do this, if, if you cry about it, people won't attack you. People tend to back off when they see tears. It's like, oh, poor her. Look at her. She's suffering. She's sad. I'm not going to be cruel. I'm not going to be harsh. I'm not going to give my opinion right now because she can't take it. And so every time she would fuck up, seemingly, gain weight, do the wrong thing, whatever the tears always I wrote down something oh yeah I want to make mini goals um I'm tired of making these gigantic goals and failing I'm tired of failing so I want to give my reason I mean I want to give a reason to myself to succeed a lot of you might you know see me as such a failure but I really do care about myself and I need to do this I just need to do this, so here's my weigh-in photo from today. So, there it is, 385.2, and I am just disgusted. I wasn't expecting to gain that much weight, and I regret it. And I, I'm the type of person who doesn't regret anything at all. I'm just, I just, I wanted to let you guys know that don't be me. Do not be me. Don't lose a bunch of weight and then gain it back because it is one of the worst feelings in the world. To go from so proud of yourself to hating yourself. I'm going to stop crying. I'm going to go downstairs. I'm just going to move on with my life and really hope that 2015 can be magical for me. I don't believe in fairy tales, but maybe I will now. Sadly for Amber and a good chunk of her audience, she did not manage to reach her goal. She started YouTube off at 368 pounds, and not only did she not manage to get below 300, she didn't manage to reach 331 pounds either. She managed to put weight on. But 2015, she promised us, would be the year she finally lost the weight just as long as nothing stressful happened that caused her to binge eat. We decided to break up. Whoa. And that is 2014. Oh my God, that was so good. So well edited, so well done. It's so nice to go back. I swear to God, I haven't spent this much time thinking about Amber in literally years now. Literally, I sound like, oh no. No! <laughs> um, this is a good time. I'm enjoying this. You guys tell me, okay? Because I enjoy Housewives and it doesn't work on this channel. You tell me. Should we continue on with this? Should we do it on this channel? Should we do it on Twitch? How, do you want to do it yes or no? And if yes, where are we doing this? Because I'm down. I'm enjoying this until it gets to the boring stuff. We, in my mind, haven't even gotten to the good stuff yet. Because like I said, to me... The, I loved, loved the Destiny era is the, you could say the best content on her channel. And then when it's uh, the the Becky plus living with Eric and Ricky, it's good times. But Destiny, I mean, I think we can all agree was probably the best time of her whole damn life. You guys are saying yes and here. Okay. So we will. I think that's what we'll do. Since Chantal is putting out, let's say, less and less, and even when she puts out things, half of it I don't want to watch because I don't care about her ASMR. I don't care about the driving. I don't care about most things on the couple's channel. When we have short videos, like today, we watched a 10-minute Chantal video, we will continue on with the Amberverse stuff, okay? Until we get bored. Because 
around the time of Crack Cat Olympics. And when she moves, it, it gets ridiculously boring. But I am so here for these like old years. It brings me so far back. Holy crap. Ah, good times. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everybody, for like doing this. Whoops. To yourself, Alexandra. Damn it. Uh, I love it. All right. So that's what we'll do. Next time we have the time, we uh, we will move on to 2015 and what happened. Spoiler alert. Well, as if you need to know, she's about 530 pounds now. So you know there's 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 no weight loss. But we will keep hearing about the 89 LBs and lots of crazy other shit. I can't wait. Yay! You didn't see the Destiny era? Oh, my God. Hold on to your fucking hats. It's the best. I think it was the best. It was it was Amber at her most outwardly ridiculous. Absolutely. It was Amber in love, really, for the first time in her life. And, and sh I mean, she's still in love with Destiny. She's still in love with Destiny. It's just so chaotic with Destiny. And, ah, uh, what a time. What a time to be alive when Destiny was cheating on her at the end of the relationship. And Amber could feel that like the bond was breaking between them. So what did she do? She did that Christmas. Do you guys remember the Christmas where she bought everything for Destiny? Everything. That was the biggest exaggeration I've ever seen in my life. Destiny, the fucking shady ass bitch, knows damn right she's like cheating on Amber and about to dump Amber. Opens all the Christmas presents, keeps all the Christmas presents. It was the most savage thing I've ever seen. It was amazing. And then, yes, Tweety, the drunk Lynn video where Amber gets drunk and talks about the breakup. And Oh, listen, we're going to get to some pretty, pretty fucking good times. Undeniably, the reason she wore the crown before Chantal got it in the crackhead Olympics, it all has to, it all comes back to the destiny era. So I can't wait till we get there. We will continue on and we're not that far away. Everybody. Woo. I can't wait. Listen, thank you guys so much again for this today. It's nice to talk about something else. I don't know. I don't feel quite as ragey right now as when we just end on Chantal, <laughs> but we are caught up in Chantopolis. So uh, if, and when our girl comes live later, I'm on it. I will grab it. It's what we will start with next, okay? And uh, yeah, we will continue on with Amber because these are fucking amazing. I'm going to leave the link to Mr. Snowflake's channel down below in the description. Highly recommend you guys check it out. We're going to be watching them together in chronological order. I can't freaking wait. Y'all, thank you again so, so much for being here today. Enjoy the rest of your weekends, whatever you're doing today. Take advantage of it. And if you're in the rainy spot like I am, well, Still take advantage indoors, whatever, okay? What we were going to do today, the big plan on the channel, is not canceled, it's postponed. When nice happen, uh, nice weather happens and I can coordinate again what was going on today, we're definitely going to do it, uh, definitely. It's a, it was going to be a really fun, petty day. We love those days. So postponed, not canceled, everybody. Y'all, again, whatever you're doing, enjoy your days, be safe, keep your masks on, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.